Hello, people. Yeah. It's nice to be back for another episode. Who would have thunk that first episode would have went as good as it did? Stupid ass stuff, dude. Stupid ass backyard wrestling stuff getting more views than there are in an hour of a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, Is that a lot? More hours <laughs> worth of viewing than there are hours in a day. People seem to love us and they love what we're doing, so we're going to do another episode, huh? How about it? I they love really me. love us? They they love me. I mean, <laughs> they definitely love me. I love me. JP loves himself. Everybody else loves me. It's Mr. Champ to you. So uh, we're back for episode two, and today uh, we're going to talk about what happened after ETW. Uh, the thing that kind of ended ETW and the thing that pretty much started me. R.I.P. R.I.P. ETW. But we're not quite there yet, so uh, let's just say hi to everybody in the room today. We have the champ, JP. Yep. How's life, bro? Living. Yeah, living. It's fun. Spent like the last four days in the hood just doing That's what I do, man. Plumbing. Plumbing the hood. Poop up to the knees. We got a lot of poop. A lot of poop going on. A lot of hood poop. Over there, we got uh, our master chief. We got Dominic. Hi. How's life today? Uh, Good. I have my two kitties, and I'm very happy about that. Very happy about it. Yeah. Did you enjoy that chicken marsala? It was super good. I'm glad you liked super it. Super delicious. I'll make some more cool stuff next time. Thanks. Dude, Do I sound wait. like an NPC? Not yet, but we can try. <laughs> we can trying. go out of our way to make you the NPC. <laughs> yeah, it was I, good. I have two kitties. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I got to say Rick's marsala was amazing. It was really Dude, good. That was, yeah. I've that never was had it before. Awesome. It's best one, the best I've had so uh, far. So Yeah, no doubt about it. But, <laughs> but who even are you? You're Steve, right? Yes. It's nice to have you back with us today. How are you feeling? I'm great. Good to be back. What's going on with that right hand of yours? Oh, I got a minor surgery on my index finger. Why I have to wear this gigantic thing, I don't know. Well, are we two for two on surgeries? Yep. All right. Yep. Nice. nice. Wait, do you had a surgery before each episode? Uh, Well, I had the... First oh, surgery before the first yeah. one, and then wow. like I got this surgery on the 25th. Are you I knew, sure you want to be in another episode? I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Do you have a count on how many surgeries you've had in your life? Yeah, it's not it's not as many as you'd think. I, um, I, my guess is like six. I uh, got my nose twice, my the tendon in my hand, and Nine? then uh, my gallbladder, and then this, so... That's six? Five. Wow. Five. Five. Wow. five six. That's approximately five more than I've had. Yeah, I have zero. <laughs> I, I've never had <laughs> Well, like, I knew that I was getting my gallbladder taken uh, out, and I was like, well, I'm going to be on the men for that one. May as well knock out this other one. Absolutely. Know. Cut that, that one is. out. <laughs> <laughs> some effed up poop. <laughs> you know what else is some effed up poop? The end of ETW. Mm, R.I.P. It, uh, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. But it was, in fact, times. At that time... There was the introduction of the thing we all affectionately refer to as the base. The boss. Uh, so the base, for people that don't know, is essentially a, a wrestling ring, as, as good as you can call it one, with no ropes, just the, the ring base is what it essentially was. But it was a little bit more than that. It wasn't just the bottom half of it, you know, it was... Uh, it was a, a monument to our love of backyard wrestling. Um, where I'm, I'm assuming that you had a yeah, lot was, to do with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I initially, well, I first was getting into the backyard wrestling when I was making the music videos for ECW, posting them on Wrestling Figs, the backyard wrestling section. There was a post, I don't know who it was, uh -huh. that had instructions on how to make a wrestling ring. And one was how to make a base. And just over time, um, I really I, I watched these uh, guys. Their the wrestling company was um, VXW. They were up in uh, Massachusetts, and they were a trampoline fed. And then uh, they switched to a base, and I was like, "Wow, that looks so cool!" So uh, I, you took this idea, I'm guessing, to Josh. Well, initially, we had an idea of bringing in uh, Jay, Damian, Matt. Um, the, I think Scott as well. Too. Okay, so these are, uh, for people that don't know, these are the TWC guys? Yes, but I don't think that was their name They're back like then. 2XW. 2XW, yeah. yeah, yeah. 2XW, yeah. The, the, an idea was to From, do... From uh, Philadelphia? Yes, it would have been ETW versus HWC versus 2XW. Oh, damn, that for real. Was, I, this was sure an idea. I don't even remember it, but it was like... Then they didn't come, so then it just turned into ETW versus HWC. Gotcha, right? Um, Damn, that would have been so crazy. Yeah, that's and, wild. But like they were, I like, didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure you did at the time. Yeah, but just over time, like because I even like like came up with like the who should win, so like each company had, was like an equal, you know, footing. Uh -huh. Um, 
So then uh, they couldn't make it, and then they kind of like also pushed like, well, you know, if you get a base, you know, we'll be more inclined. Of course, um, as far right. as I can, can I call. ask about bases? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so obviously we kind of like wrestling fans know what what a wrestling ring is, and some know how it's built. Yeah, a base is kind of different. How did the idea of a base get created by Backyard Wrestling? It's so unique. I have no idea. I, I, think I like to think of it as some like MacGyver where there's a will, there's a way type of stuff. Take what you can get. Yeah. And okay. right. Well, so I'm, like the most obvious thing that I remember seeing even on YouTube and it's younger days of YouTube, like more of the infancy, um, it would just be somebody with three mattresses on the ground. That's what I was going to yeah, say. And yeah. that would be like kind of like... Even like we were talking about before, you would slam your brothers on the mattresses, you know? Like, I, I never had a brother, you know, so to me. But, I'm a brother, <laughs> man. But in general, like, that's, that's what people did to start wrestling, right, was right. wrestled yeah. on a bed, like your wrestling buddies yeah. or a mattress. I'd love or what to have know, you. like, who invented the base, because that's like, you know, who invents stuff? Who's a, who's a famous invent? Guy's a genius. Thomas Edison, honestly. did he invent? Yes. All right, good. I, I don't want to sound too stupid. Ball, right? I, don't, I hope so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, whoever, who's our guy? Right. Who invented the base? We're going to have to figure that out. Doesn't get enough credit. I'll see if I can do some, uh, some hey, uh, yeah. Eric might know. You know, yeah. on it, Dude, honestly, I bet you the VCW guys know because they're historians on all this they stuff. They started on a trampoline as well. Right. They started trampoline and, as well. Uh, Were they like, also ETW? I feel like, I feel like <laughs> everyone was if you had a trampoline. <laughs> Everything it just, it just, it just goes. Like, it, it just sounds it has right. To happen. And then you had um, like the LWF guys, like Anarchy Andy and those people that definitely had a base really early. Like yes. I 100% remember that. So, I mean, if we already give credit to Anarchy Andy for everything, we might as well give it to him for the base too, right? Like, right. He's Anarchy Andy. Well, he probably dreamed it. Let's uh, inform people. I think what Dom was getting at is what the materials were. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, that, yeah, that's something we want to talk about, anyways. Right? Absolutely. So, yeah. It was more than tires. Tires. Yeah. A lot of tires. <laughs> Tires, uh -huh. uh, pallets right. at one point, but yep. not for the first ETW. Uh, we had got them. Then it was mattress springs, but for the first ETW thing, it was just mattresses. Uh -huh. Then plywood, and then carpet padding, and uh, a tarp. But we <clears throat> didn't get a tarp that covered the whole thing. Yeah. I remember the wet carpets uh -huh. a lot yeah. of the times, and I was cool with it. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> especially whenever it was up in the woods, which we'll eventually get to, it it was not a very not, safe thing. Not a <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was pretty actually disgusting. A lot of amoeba. In terms of the base and how it was built, um, you said that it was just mattresses. It wasn't a mattress spring. So over time, burnt off the mattress stuff or whatever, throw it in a fire, yes. just burn all the crud off of it. Yes. Uh, by the time we got our hands on it, it was some rusty ass springs that weren't once again were not safe. I remember specifically finding mattresses uh -huh. that are like thrown out and then burning them on the small patio that I had uh, at my, at my dad's house. It was just, and it's a main road, so you right, see the yeah, fire. It was like, right. So I couldn't burn it like entirely. I'd do like bits and pieces every now and then. Mattresses uh -huh. burn fantastic. <laughs> so do couches, right? Couches, right. Yes. <laughs> For me, yes. burning the mattress was strictly just because an uh, old mattress that someone else slept on was gross. Yes, absolutely. Like, I couldn't care less about it just being <laughs> spring. I, right, right. Just, so, uh, Good do, point. You, do you remember where you got the materials? I do, vaguely. Um, I know uh, Josh's relative uh -huh. has a junkyard or is affiliated with one, and, and he was like, we can get the tires from here. And, I, and we got my dad's trailer, and he drove, and we picked them. We tried to get all the same sizes, but beggars can't be choosers. Absolutely. I, I feel like, I don't remember when Out of Control 2 was, but I feel like we probably started getting the materials in like July, and like it would have been the next month. Like We were really rushing. Absolutely right. Um, before Out of Control 2, you actually had a visitor yes. come to Pittsburgh, which is the first, to my knowledge, outsider that came to a Pittsburgh wrestling show. Who was that? Yes, you are correct. That would have been uh, Joe Explicit. Uh -huh. I think um, back then, I don't even remember if that was his name. This like, is the Joey that's in California? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I hung out with him out there once. He currently Trey. works on The Challenge, which I thought he Dude, worked on. Dude, so Survivor. jealous of him. Yeah, yeah. right? Oh. For him. Right? Hell yeah. He said he's been doing it for like 10 years now, just being yeah. like a video guy or Dude, something. Dude, his Instagram, like The Challenge people just comment on his Instagram. Yeah. And like, fuck you, Joey. That's <laughs> no. the life I want to live. Yeah, right. He uh, came in, <laughs> it would have guy. been <laughs> May. You know who he grew up with, by the way? Eric Douglas, your boy. <laughs> yeah, right? Love Doug. He's just living that, living that life that Dude, you wish you were living. Honestly, I want to be him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Joey came in and uh, like I want to say it was May, and we had a, a show. This was before the base. It was kind of like a soft uh, introduction um, for him coming in. I think it was called No Limits, and I wrestled Josh, and then we did like a double shot. We did like an ETW Cannon show, and then uh-huh. the next day was kind of just like a spot show. Right. And then I wrestled him there um, on that next day, but he was on a trip with his dad and his brother, and his dad was going to a event of something, and they made it like a trip, and um, that's you know kind of just worked out that way. <laughs> and then fast forward, then he came in for Out of Control Two. Okay. And the initial plan was because Josh got sick around that time, and Dom was on vacation. I Did was. Did you wrestle one Out of Control Two? JP? It's a great question, man. That would, the, you're not asking the right person. Yeah. Ask JP Does what Out of did. Control 2 exist Anything anywhere? Anything outside of last we week. We have no media of Out of Control Does 2 Does Josh whatsoever. not have it anywhere? I mean, maybe on a hard drive or something. I have a, a, just a very quick snippet from that uh, day. Right. So the day you guys did Out of Control 2 uh-huh. was the day I was driving home from right. vacation. Right. I got home, uh, walked down the street, walked into Josh's house, and all the boys were in there yeah. watching it from the camera on their uh, on the the big TV in his house. So everyone's, do you remember this at all? So you might not have been yeah, there. Yeah, you, you were definitely there. there. I was definitely there. Um, and we got to sit there and watch Out of Control too. I remember feeling like kind of bummed that yeah, I wasn't there, but then right. like also my ears perked up because like I saw the like new setup and right, I'm like, right. Ooh, what's uh, going on which here? Which kind of nice. So, also, we never did that. We would not do ETW and then immediately watch it. Right. Like, that was the only time we ever did that. And I think it was because um, we had, you know, like it wasn't dark out or anything like that. Yeah, right, right. Big, yeah, it's like, absolutely. well, now what do we do? Middle right. of summer. So We're we just, still hanging. Yeah, so, yeah, I kind of remember the you... Telling the telling this story, I kind of had the visual of yeah. you coming in and it being like, "Oh my god!" Like, I, I feel like that's that. the day, or potentially the week, that someone might have said that either Mackenzie or Paul's parents had concerns with them potentially wrestling on the base, right? right. Maybe yeah, within they, that time frame, because they specifically wrestled on the trampoline. Yeah. The the, the so the, that's the end of ETW though, right? Well, For, technically yes, in a way. Technically yes, but I remember also while Joey was in town. You were definitely there. We went and saw Mackenzie's band, uh, Masters of the Universe. Yeah. And we were uh, big into sausage them. Party. We were big into them <laughs> Dude, freshman year. I still wish I could listen to them. That was I, awesome. I texted him, and I was like, brother, when are you going to give me one of your CDs? Because I live across from his parents. And he was like, I think my mom has one of the CDs. And I'm Is this like, recently? This was in the past year. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Speaking and of CDs, like, if anybody out there would like a copy of uh, Portal Gun, I still have like 38 of them that didn't get sold because nobody listens to CDs anymore. So hit up <laughs> your boy for a copy of Portal Gun. I've my truck does not even years. have a CD thing in nobody it. Nobody does. Crazy. No, nobody wants it. They, they're like, I love you, bro, but like, I'm going to throw that shit away. Digital. I have nothing to do with it. And then like I remember for also for Out of Control 2, we also had the entranceway. So that's what that was what I was going to bring up next. So Dominic brought up the new setup. I'm guessing that included the entrance. Mm-hmm. That would have been the first time we had that. Was this another thing that you saw online, or is this something this that you were like, I just want to do it? That I that um, as far as I can recall, I was just thinking about the logistics of it, and I uh-huh. was like, well, okay, so we can't make a Titantron or anything like that, right? But we can make a wall and just paint it, yep. and then just cut out the middle. It Absolutely, you can. And it I was feel, done really well. Who did it? Well, so initially. I'll get to that, but I think I seriously just designed it on like Microsoft Paint, just okay. by using like the rectangle and like, okay, we do this. this you like this. did architecture, kind of, yeah, yeah. And Hell then yeah. like in <laughs> hindsight, I was like, shit, I, sh- I was like, uh, I shouldn't have done OOC. We should have did ETW, so we could have used it all the time. Yeah, yeah, I feel and that. And there was a plan to do the repaint of that, but I don't know what happened. But I remember it literally, we we constructed it either. We probably painted it the week before uh-huh. and then constructed it, I want to say, uh, the day before. And I remember my dad came up and helped, and then my uncle came down. Uh, he saw, like, we were outside, and he also um, helped us build it. So yeah. that was kind of like just my dad and my uncle that, you know, worked with the, the logistics of, like, oh, you know what? I want to say they were there for the painting. Absolutely. Because okay. I remember that they, they were talking about the diameter of the logos and stuff like that. Yeah, this would have all had to happen relatively fast. Yes. Okay. Very fast. Yeah. And also, keep in mind, uh, a lot of us didn't have jobs back then. Uh-huh. I 
think I had just started my first job uh, at Mr. Hoagie, and a Mr. Lot Hoagie, of, yeah, uh, a lot of the the paychecks went to ETW Absolutely. at this point. Right, but I hated that job, so I, I didn't sustain it. I yeah, might have been Mr. at the cleaners. You didn't like yeah. Mr. Hoagie? Uh, I forgot. Yeah, you were <laughs> that's where I met him. Yeah, I so. love Mr. Hoagie. So out of control too, right? Uh, as much as it was supposed to be a sequel to the tremendous success of Outer Control 1, did it feel like it? Did it live up? Did you feel good about it? Well, uh, one of the things that I was, I was going to try and get into, but I lost track, is Josh got sick right before then. And oh, at damn. this point, I was the number two heel uh -huh. behind Death, if not behind Dom. Because I was I was still doing the same storyline. I was feuding with Josh, who was Absolutely. the babyface owner, owner. And um, I was the heel. And then... Josh got sick, but Death was the top heel as the champion, and that was going to be Mako's crowning moment. Um, but he got sick. I think he got like pneumonia or uh, mono. Gosh, I want to say the whole crew went down. Yeah, RIP, man. Damn, bro. Yeah, it was it was slim picking. So then uh, there was the idea. It was kind of kind of went into like a panic mode. We're like, well, what do we do if Josh can't go? Absolutely right. Because at this point, it's August. You know, we can't really. You know. So how we, much of the main roster was there for the show? Yeah. Do you remember the card? I couldn't tell you. Dude, him. I was there, and that's really all that matters. Yeah, right. Well, the we're not even sure if you were there. Yeah, I thought oh. we said you weren't there. <laughs> Damn. We're, we don't know. All I remember for sure is I wrestled four times that day. Holy shit. I wrestled I wrestled as your character, Bakora. Nice. I wrestled as my mask character. Shadow Sh Ninja. Well, at that point, it would have been Shadow Samurai. Shadow Samurai, yes. And That's then, what I remembered. And then I wrestled Josh. Uh -huh. And then in a bonus main event after. So we went into panic mode, tried to figure out who I could wrestle. Joey was like, hey, you know, I'll come back out. So like, cool, well, I'll wrestle him thinking that's what it was going to be. Uh -huh. And then Josh was like, you know, like, I'm good to wrestle. I'm like, oh, okay. And then Joey's like, yeah, so I'm still coming in. I think maybe his dad only wanted him to wrestle me or something like that. Yeah, and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just so, want to point something out because I find it interesting. Yeah. Because it, I'm trying to think of the timelines and where they coincide. Uh -huh. And this would have been the very, like, last day of July or the first day of August. I want to say it was definitely in August. And, uh, okay, so the very last thing that happens on HWC Tape 2 is on July 19th, 2006. So think of think of it this way. I announce a pay-per-view yeah. that never happens. Right. Probably go on vacation. Yes. Out of Control 2 happens. Yes. And then it's like... The, like we've we don't even i don't even know if we acknowledge the fact that everything basically at that point you're right changed and died and we just kind of accepted it i don't do we talk about well, it no no I mean, it didn't necessarily die at it, that point yeah it, the it, branding did yeah because we weren't on a trampoline anymore save for mako and death right. honestly uh the only two the only matches i remember are mako and death the main event me and josh and me and um joey, joey. I don't, i'm sure my brother wrestled yeah, you, maybe you wrestled my brother. I don't. I'm sure Quinn was there. That's I what know. I was gonna say. Yeah. So like Quinn, it's always a safe guess to say that he was there, and it's also a safe guess to say that he wasn't there. Right. It's literally a coin. I want to say he was, but yeah. well, I'm just assuming because I wrestled twice under two mass characters. Actually, you guys once again charged tickets, yep. and this time they the it was donated to Salvation. Katrina Relief, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, that's Ow. a thing. Yeah. What'd you do? Give him Dude, 15 we bucks? <laughs> yeah, we helped them. I think we Josh would have done it without us. Yeah, yeah, I think Josh said it was in like the 60s or oh, something. That I couldn't oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's right. That's actually pretty good. Right. Dude. Hey. Yeah, because I had a family friend who worked for the Salvation uh -huh. Army. So we just donated yeah. right then and there. So did this feel like that the climax? Been the money yeah, for yeah, the so next it, base. Gentlemen. <laughs> we're gentlemen. Yes. It, uh, it did. It felt. We give back to our community. We do. Well, where did Katrina hit? Our community. The United States is our community. <laughs> it's our community. Did, so did Out of Control 2 like, feel like the climax? It did. It still felt like our WrestleMania. And I remember even, man, I really wish my external didn't crash. But I remember specifically like um, Josh. Josh even did his second character, uh, Mercenary. I thought it was so Juggalo. There was, he had two. Well, he, he was doing it. He did another second character. Gotcha. To go into his heel turn. Damn, it was going to be man. a mask. Um, oh wait, so mercenary was actually him. Yes, he was actually the, the little guy. Jay. Yeah, Juggalo was just was a phony. Just he was a Bakora. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. gotcha. Um, but oh. I remember there's fun fact. Yeah, I was so wrong on the last podcast about uh, Bakora never winning a match and Punisher never losing. Yeah, very last match ever. 
Bakura beats the Punisher. No way! Yeah, it does happen. Dude, fucking plot And he becomes twist. the U.S. champion, and I just, I now had to correct that. Was JP not Bakura in that match? Uh, probably. Because it was you versus Punisher versus Bakura. Yeah. Did it make sense? Because so I'm the champ. You yeah. <laughs> you were double strapped up. Sorry, continue. Right. Just no doubt. No, good that, information to That was along. very... Because we have fans <laughs> out here who are going to think forever that the Punisher never lost. Right. You know in your heart that true. Bakura beat him. Can't have yeah. that. Yeah. And like, listen, he may have not have beaten him like in the cleanest manner, but that doesn't matter on paper. Right. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, which also reminded me uh, every now and then when we would do ETW and we weren't short like we we'd have josh's boom box either up in his room or outside and we weren't oh, yeah, sure. it was window. hard we didn't want to yell uh-huh. who it was and then there would be like we try to convey it like whoever's not wrestling would just hold up the w sign with their fingers and then like someone wrestling would look and they'd go real quick <laughs> <laughs> kind of like convey, <laughs> put my music on <laughs> we were pretty like good and bad at music right. we'd have days we were flawless and right. we'd have days where we wouldn't play that shit right. like <laughs> So unfortunately, and that's that's the death of our homie ETW right there. Out of control is the end of the line for extreme trampoline wrestling. As far as the branding, yeah, goes, right yes. for actual extreme trampoline yes. wrestling. HWC is also dead at this point. Now this is uh, it's a little bit because of growing up. That's part of it. Everybody's growing up and growing apart. But obviously, there was still wrestling to be had Locked. after the end of ETW. Right? Yeah, we rebranded as. SCAW, which stood for Steel City Alternative Wrestling. Okay. Because okay. we wanted it to be an alternative to the trampoline. Uh huh. And, um,. I don't know how I know there was Steel City wrestling actually in in the wrestling history in Pittsburgh, and, and I guess I just kind of went from that. And this, so this was still in Josh's backyard. Still in Josh's backyard, but at this point, it was just getting a little bit harder to organize and right. get people to care. And then some people had um, they weren't too excited about the base, so the frequency of doing these SCAW shows was very, very, you know slim at best so like it was uh who was the scaw roster like death is gone now because he's not wrestling on the base he was still i think he was still there just not as frequently and i want to say so was mako because he just won the championship Mm -hmm. so they were there but not like there was you know the writing was on the wall they weren't making they didn't love it anymore right right um one of the things i remember storyline wise i was just thinking about this the other day um the punisher kidnapped my brother okay and then we filmed like a a backstage thing in the alley of josh's can i uh, tell you it would have been a little cooler if you would have had e kidnap the punisher though (laughs) okay so okay so then it was okay i think i revealed what what the idea was somebody kidnapped e okay (laughs) and it was going to be the punisher gotcha and then punisher got kidnapped from the same mass figure and it was going to be my brother. Yeah. And they were going to be in on it. Yes. Trying to. Oh, my God. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. Fucking genius. But dude. I remember. Um, so they kidnapped each other so they could do the dirt. So so uh, Punisher would be using that motivation, like the, him taking him hostage to get an uh, SCAW title shot, where E was taking him hostage to, uh, well, what, under a mask to get a uh, U.S. title shot. So they were both going to gain from it. Okay. I remember um, none of this. <laughs> I mean, it was it was so, it's like... Incredible. It was... It was so how I feel all was, the time. It was the entire time. So, <laughs> for people that might just watch this because they're our friends, and if they don't remember, the Punisher is Ronnie. Right. So I'm trying to imagine Ronnie at this age uh-huh. just absolutely going along with this right. and i can't picture dude i was thinking that last episode it. like i can't picture ronnie going along i mean with you could see him at the end at the one match he was like i'm in no mood for this i got sunburned but like <laughs> he's telling the truth yeah like, so how was he convinced i mean i i think probably at that time it was just you know it fell into the you know people just weren't making it a priority dude, it, it had to be yeah. it had to be you Mm-hmm. It had to be like, ah, Dominic's my best friend. I'll, right, I'll right, do right. this for him. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. I was hanging out with him a lot at yeah. that time. But yeah. I remember we went to uh, Josh's alley and like somebody's yard has like a fence and it was covered in like, you know, shrubbery and uh, the masked character tied up E and was like, you know, give me what I want and whatever. And 
I don't remember what happened, but E said something incorrectly, and I was like, damn it! Like, yeah. this it's is funny. the storyline! <laughs> it's funny because, like, I actually can vaguely remember this happening. Yeah? And, like, I don't remember shit. Right, so, like, this but is... I do remember, like, shooting we, a promo in the alley. We with, never yeah. did anything theatric like right. that. And I really wish... I remember what movie that was, but there was a hostage situation, and they were evacuating the thing. The police were there. And what they did was the 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 villains they also like they put hoods over all the hostages, and then the villains did that too, mm. and they escaped with the hostages. So they had to arrest all of the hostages, I and see. that's all I remember. On it. Yeah, and that's where I got the idea from. It's like, oh well, they're kind of like disguised as the hostages. What can I? How can I make that into a storyline? I don't remember what the name of that movie was, and that's all I saw from that movie. Couldn't tell you how yeah, it ended. But it, you used it as motivation. Yes. And then I want to say we had another, we had a couple matches um, still on the base. We had another flaming casket match. True. But I remember I was wrestling JP and debuted my um, wrist clutch um, uh, fisherman suplex as my new finish. And I remember it was on to you. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was raining and it was cold. Bro, and I dropped my new finish on JP for the first time too. I think we all did. <laughs> stud. Yeah. Absolute stud. stud. So we're going to finally get into some footage here. Yeah. And we have a little SCAW versus KPW from the year 2006. See, this is fun because I don't remember much of the base. Now, this is the one video that I could not upscale. So this is going to, nobody can see what's going on. Was this from my hard drive? No, this is mine. Yes. This is mine. Wow, I had gear. Scott's name was... uh, Vala Victoria. Vala Victoria. I love it. So that ended up being Scott Brumley. That's E and Nick and Newsy. Yep. That's Joshua Todd versus Mad Dog. Yep, Joshua. And uh, we got Sean Phoenix versus James Nutter, right? Yep. Correct. How do we know him at that point? I I had met Nutter on um, Wrestling Figs, and he was like a big fan of mine. So what's Wrestling Figs? It was just another message board that okay. was like, it, it. its whole purpose wasn't just backyard wrestling, but had different subsections. Uh-huh. So um, I knew him from there, and then we found out that he lived uh, about like an hour and a half away from us. So then it was like, oh, well, we have a base. Come up here and do this. Hell yeah. Um, he and still wrestles, one, right? Not anymore. No. Okay. No, he actually has a uh, YouTube book review channel that see, I think it does pretty well, actually. His quality is great. Like, he's he's good. doing what we're doing here. Good, good. Um, and I want to say, randomly, I went down to Mount Morris just to hang out with them one day before this to kind of just, you know, meet them. Uh-huh. And uh, I remember my mom was pretty annoyed that she had to come, she'd take me down there and then pick me up. She's like, why won't they let you stay over? It's <laughs> like, it's about an hour and a half drive. So you figure she would have to do that four times. Um, but yeah, so then that kind of, this was, this was the idea was we wanted to have a base at Josh's so we could have out of towners come in. And at this point, so I want to say this is probably September, October, probably September. Um, we had probably, it, I want to say we improved the base at this point because... Uh, it looks sturdy. It yeah, looks sturdier than it ever did when I had I it. Couldn't tell you what we did to improve it, but I want to say, I remember out of control to the tarp wasn't big enough. So half the time, ta- most of the show didn't even have the tarp. Uh-huh. That tarp looks manageable. Yep. Um, and it looks pretty sturdy. Yep. Half the time, the tarp was more dangerous than it was effective. Right, exactly. Especially later on. But we'll, right. we'll talk about it. Um, Watch us chop the throat. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was big Jimmy Nutter, too. That was... Yeah, that right. was. So I remember when I first saw this, I had already known Nutter. Like, he came for BYS1. Yes. And then I saw this afterward. And I'm like, what the right? shit? Like, how yeah. did that happen so right? fast? And you can see the out-of-control uh, entranceway leaning yeah. up against the thing that just stayed there. How do we have this if we don't have anything in between? I, yeah, how did you... Because uh, I, lo- I love Nutter. I love the KPW so you, guys. Okay, so so you back in the this. day, you sent it to me. Yeah, and I, just, okay, and you just I never got it. rid of it. Okay. So I probably never sent you ETW stuff. Never. Because I feel no. like I had footage from this day, but just my match. Probably, yeah. Because then I remember I didn't even... I was getting a little bit more confident with my video editing. Uh, I wasn't using... Yeah, this wasn't bad. I wasn't using... Um, windows movie maker i forget what i was using though it wasn't vegas it wasn't or it was something in between uh-huh. and it gave me more options for um transitions and effects and stuff like that which is really the only thing that those things are good for like right. movie and maker it, is just spiral effect every time right right i watched my bump on this <laughs> <laughs> because it's so big yeah right and I, we use that later on exactly like the, yeah that's exactly. long-term i want to say right i pitched that because of that so we also had jp versus genocide on this show and the first kevin th- there was a triple threat 
I'm sorry, and uh, Scott. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Scott was in that match as well. So Scott wrestled JP and, and his brother. He, but he also wrestled somebody else, right? No? No. So wait, that is so weird that we just kept throwing the Brumley brothers in triple threat matches forever. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. See, there's that move I was telling you about that I had already had yeah. debuted at this point. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, we have, uh, JP versus Genocide comes around later again. Josh versus Mad Dog comes around later. You're like, this is a big oh, foreshadowing show. Sakes. This would have been in October then because you would have, would have met Jay at this point and you're doing his finish there. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're completely good. And this is the revamped base? Yes. So how much time really... Couple this is months. This is between August and... August and October. Like at this point, it's probably easier to find... You know, more carpets. And, uh-huh. Okay. And I, I want to say, we only probably, at that, for Out of Control, we only probably had one mattress, and we just put it in the middle. Right. So at this point, we probably also added pallets, too, as well, and maybe got more mattresses. So if you had to guess, how many SCAW or just how many shows after Out of Control happened in Josh's yard before this day? Man, probably less than 10. Okay. okay. Maybe, and that's even pushing it. Maybe I, less than five. Because I don't remember much of it. I like yeah. this. Were you trying to hit me? Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was the ref. That was awesome. So you were talking about it. This is after uh, he will have met Jay, and we talked yes. about Jay a little bit earlier. One of the two XWTWC guys. Yes. How did that come about? So who who is Jay? What's his wrestling name? B cubed. B cubed, aka beautiful Bobby Buxton. Later. He was on Wrestling Figs that I had seen. I would, I would watch his shows, um, and he kind of bridged. He was the first person that bridged the gap between wrestle, Wrestling Figs and uh, the Backyard Wrestling Link. He went and wrestled with Kale, Brian, Neil at some barn that I don't know where that was, but then Jay was kind of more of a regular there. Is Absolutely. this around WrestleFest 2 time? Would have been before so actually, I want to say... Because I so, think the well, first time I met Jay was at WrestleFest, WrestleFest 2. Okay, so yeah. before we get into WrestleFest 2, you brought up... You already told us what uh, the Wrestling Figs was. And then you said that Wrestling Figs was bridged to the Backyard Wrestling Link Correct. by B-Cubed. I want to say, yeah. Uh, no, actually, it would have been technically uh, Combination Combat Kid. Okay. Which would have been in 2004, 2005. But he was more... Up, um, like the Northeast with Drew Cordero and such. Yo, oh, wow. Danielle, 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 Danielle. Wow, bro, we just got right delivered here, right hot here, chocolate chip right cookies in the middle of the podcast, bro. Wow, Un- you better wife that girl <laughs> again, <laughs> again. I'll consider it. <laughs> I'm talking to JP. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. I'll fucking do it. Unbelievable. Okay, so. We're just going to have to wait it out. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. Thanks, Danielle. Oh. So we just got back from eating cookies. <laughs> still here, man. They're still eating the cookies. Still delicious. Um, thank you, Danielle. Appreciate you. Thank you. V- so, VIP. Yes, no doubt about it. So what we were getting at before the cookies was the linking of the Backyard Wrestling Link to the WrestleFigs forum. And that was done by Combination Combat Kid and B-Cubed. And essentially, the link is the big daddy of backyard wrestling yeah uh it was back when message boards were big and it was i remember downloading backyard wrestling videos on kazaa which predated lime I remember water that. Yep. for me uh-huh. and i pronounced it, it kaza that's yeah I, I don't know i always pronounce it no kaza you're probably too. you're probably like i bet everyone did it different right, right. i always did <laughs> kaza but i heard kazaa enough times like maybe i've been saying it wrong but okay so either way it would be like compilation, like music videos, and it was like the shit backyard wrestling. Yeah. And I noticed that they all had the backyard wrestling link in the beginning, like going all the way back to like 2001. Okay. And uh, it was a message board, and then it grew into um, what it is. Uh, essentially, the backyard wrestling link was this online message board run by these dudes from the greatest backyard wrestling fed of all time, VCW, from uh, Vancouver, Canada. Dude, I wasn't in that fed. You were not, no. Well, no, you did not. <laughs> no. Oh, I get what you're doing. No, yeah, yeah, he's the champ, right? We needed you. If we didn't have you, we wouldn't have got shit done, right? Right. And these guys essentially found the rest of the greatest backyard wrestlers, right? So it's like they were the shit and everybody else that they allowed to be anything on their forum was also the shit. 
Correct. Yeah. To me, if, when I viewed it, it always had this because I was even like dabbling in it in my freshman year before I had really, you know, met anyone. Uh -huh. um, it was always like this intimidating place. And Couldn't I think agree more. The graphic up the top said better than you. Yes, and it I did. was like, I don't like that. I <laughs> but uh, right. there was also another message board that was an anti BYW link. Couldn't tell you what it was called. Mithril ran it. Oh, shit. Remember Mithril? Did you ever meet Johnny? Um, and uh, so I was kind of like spreading my wings to there. I was more comfortable there because it wasn't so populated. Uh -huh. um, yes. And then like MySpace was big. So I would say, oh my God, that's Anarchy Andy's MySpace. That's Airborne Extreme's MySpace. And I would add them. Uh -huh. Freak Boy, whatever. And um, then by the time when it came to, I was invited to, uh, to BYG4 to go meet everyone, they knew who I was. Okay. From Oh, yeah, we're friends on my... Because I would talk to Andy about ducks because I had a pet duck back then. And he right, had a duck yeah. farm. Andy, um, uh, Anarchy Andy, a lot of people's backyard wrestling goat. Most most people would probably consider Andy the goat. Other people, you could say other people, uh, Dan McCabe, or You know, the list does kind of go on, but if you were to... JP. Nobody. Chip not even me, and I love you, but def definitely not me. But as the list goes on, like if you tell somebody you think Andy's the best backyard wrestler ever, they're I don't even know who that is. Anarchy Andy. Do I? I don't know if you would have met him mm -hmm. at any point. Now. I mean, if I don't know who he is, can he really be the greatest? Fair point. But look at it this I'm way. I'm doing a podcast about this. But... <laughs> <laughs> Should I leave? Valid. No, This is my not. house. I might have to leave. <laughs> no, we need you to be here because you instantly bring up the pretty level of the rest of the room. So we need you around. If I just, you... I feel like I would like Anarchy Andy. Yeah, you he's would. Good, okay. If you were to ask Pac, <laughs> from AEW who the best backyard wrestler is and who motive, who taught him how to flip he would say Anarchy Andy yeah like he transcended like his his I influence see. is that's pretty impressive all over yeah. yeah and I didn't even know that I was watching him in those old videos from Kaza back right. when he was in that but you you go to BYG4 you said yes this is the show that Ricky wrestled Mithril correct yeah okay so I that's probably all I've seen from that show um you didn't go to wrestle though no, I was in town for an IWC show nearby. Very um, nice. And I remember that uh, day one had a cage match. We had to if build you can believe it. Believe that. What's that? We had to build that cage, didn't no, we? No, no, no. This was this was for BYG four. This oh. was a backyard wrestling. Cage. Oh, I thought you were talking about IWC. We did at IWC. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you guys built a cage for IWC? When I was training, yeah. We, yeah, uh, we we're that's pretty cool. Josh and then they and slammed the door on Norm's ear. Oh, that was at. That was that would have been two thousand three. Skin was in there. We didn't set that one up. Well, that was crazy. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever that was was wild. Like, IWC goes. was dope. So uh, you you went to BYG four. Correct. Didn't wrestle. Correct. What was the first uh, backyard wrestling link related show that you did wrestle on? Well, at this point, we would I would have come home and would have seen on wrestling face that now Kale had made a uh, 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 account. Uh, -huh. uh His wrestling name is Tommy Flam Flambo from XWA. Yeah, it which was. was Dover, PA, uh -huh. which, you know, as we live in PA, so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't realize in those videos that mountain range was the Appalachian Mountains in the background. Like, I should have realized that's PA. Right. But, um, so he had invited um, a good bit of us, you know, the regular posters. Um, I want to say it was me, Lee Andrews, Shane Evans, Joey Explicit. E so he, like, built the bridge back from the link. Yeah, because he had met me, and yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'll give these kids a chance. Absolutely. And then we were invited to BYT, which uh -huh. would have been uh, a couple days after Thanksgiving. But Jay B Cubed had the idea to do a super show before then in October, uh -huh. and that was WrestleFest 2. And you, JP and I were doing Cyber School at the time, and I don't, we were able to do it, like – we, you know, we, there was no rush to come home and get back for school. You did cyber school? I did. For that one year. For just what, freshman year? The sophomore. Sophomore year. I hated high school. Did a lot of weird shit in high school, man. Did you, you just didn't want to go to school? Yeah, I went to South Park, yeah. and then I was like, I don't really like this. Yeah. And then I think I went from South Park to yeah. Alderdice. Uh -huh. And then... Yeah, because that was my freshman year. I went to Alder Dice, and then I cyber schooled the next year because fuck school. I agree with that. And you yeah. were at Dice the whole time, Dominic. Holding yeah, it down. Yeah, I never left Dice. Yeah. Holding it down. Uh, uh, tattooed on me, man. So, you guys go... You you both went to rest of us, too. Yeah, man. We took a train. 15 years old, my dad, which is so funny because my dad doesn't like wrestling. Uh -huh. And him and I were never close. I was always you know closer to my mom. Yeah. He decided that he would take us, and we got a hotel... And we actually, it was a split hotel with Joey Explicit also. Like him and his dad were there because my dad knew his dad at that point. 
And we took a train from Pittsburgh to Philly, and uh-huh. it was running late, and I was really stressed. And then Philly to Telford, and we arrived, and the show, it was like nighttime, and the show had already started at this point. And I could only you, imagine how stressed you were. You were 15 years old going to this big-ass show, traveling and all this do shit. Do you remember the drunk girl on the train? Yes, yes. Yeah, dude, that, yep, I'll never I forget that. that in my what life. What happened? What did uh, she do? I honestly can't tell you she what was, she did. But you but, very specifically remember there uh, was a drunk girl on yes. the train. So look at it this way. She was making a, a, a dork of herself, uh-huh. and I had my camera, and I was like casually like hiding it. Like, this is ridiculous. Uh-huh. And she was progressively getting more and more and more drunk. Right. It got to the point where I was like just like holding the camera like up to her face, and like I didn't give a shit. Basically <laughs> interviewing her. Yeah, yeah right? Just like, recording just like Dave. Ridiculous. Yeah, and Kale th- said that that was the best video ever, which I thought was hilarious. Oh, it was a good video. It was there pretty was- funny. So you Not became a, a, a Kale Mark after WrestleFest 2 when you went? Who, me? Yeah. I don't know that I really ever became a Kale Mark. You came back wearing his fucking pants. Right. Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know. Maybe just a little influenced by what you saw and decided to bring it back. Right, right. Is that maybe when you actually finally started to get into it? Like you were actually maybe yeah that was my first like well, that was the first time I seen like backyard wrestling in a ring yeah no and, like it wasn't in a ring at that point that would have been a base for WrestleFest two oh like, yeah 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 you're on. right and what was super, BYT was the ring yeah it was in okay, a super yeah, nice yeah. neighborhood the cops yeah. came uh, because we were being way too loud yeah. uh-huh. in a suburban neighborhood and then uh, we took we you know, stayed in the hotel and we took the train back home but uh, so I think BYT is really what I'm yes. thinking of yes. As far as the ring and whatnot, and that's probably when I got more interested. I remember specifically from the Allen th- or the uh, WrestleFest show. I'm pretty sure B Cubed wrestled Thou Who Not Shall Be Named, and uh, that was the first time I like I was like, "Holy shit, these guys are nuts!" Yeah, right. Like that was a crazy match. I remember Jay went in and laid on the couch after uh-huh. the match was over, and like. I think Neil was there, and there was maybe Jay's girlfriend at the time, a couple other guys, and they were, like, taking a picture with him. And I was like, fuck, I'm getting in this picture, and I just laid, laid across them and took a picture. And none Hell of them yeah. had any idea who I was. Right. <laughs> I didn't wrestle. I just showed up with yeah, Steve. Yeah, he, he, you wrestled like, my match. I remember that. Yeah, I just showed up with Steve. I was right. just a random guy, but that was... He was literally my echo at the time. Like, right. right. When JP went, which yeah. was right So it was like, that, that match... Sad to say, was like I was like these guys are fucking wild. Yeah, they're good as that's, shit. That's when I was like, oh, backyard wrestling is pretty fucking cool. I feel yeah, dude. <laughs> had so I, I known that, I would have been like, this is what I wanted the whole time. You didn't, you didn't know how to work the left. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that that's the WrestleFest too. That uh, that earned you the invite to BYT. Correct. And uh, at BYT is that where. The Elimination Chamber match happened? The pseudo-Elimination Chamber match, which is funny because at their one show, Resurrection, they actually made, like, pods, uh-huh. like a like a rectangular pod, each thing where they had, like, it wasn't, like, around the ring. They didn't bring it for that, but it's just, like, every two minutes somebody entered. Yeah, right, and right. And it was all the WrestleFix kids uh-huh. wrestling each other in a chamber in, in an elimination match. And I remember we planned the match on AIM because we had someone from Texas, someone from Florida. We had a couple of PA guys. We had New York. Um, we planned it on AIM uh, in our chat room. And then day two, it was all of us as a team against question mark, question mark, question mark. And it was um, Tommy Flambeau, Loco, Arbo, Yakuza J, and I want to say there's somebody else. Uh, jo- uh, what's his name? Not Johnny Cockstrong. There was a kid that stole his gimmick. What is his name? It'll come to me. Cockstrong Kid was his nickname. That the, was the, like the Link versus Wrestling. Yeah, Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, right. It was the yeah. Link versus Wrestling. Yeah. So. Now you're kind of in. Yes. Fantastic well, time. real quick, next would have been Mary Mayhem. That would have been in January. Where that was I, the XWA show. That was XWA. That was in January. I wrestled Sky Binds, which uh-huh. was huge because he main evented the first video of XWA I ever saw. Well, if we're, if we're going to do this, then what we'll do is I'll just run this. I don't want this to be about me. No, But this part, because this is what we're talking about, so might as well. And then day two, it was me and Lee Andrews versus Drew Cordero and Jay Crypter. Then it would have been fast forward to WrestleFest. Three. It would have been BYD, which was Lee Andrews' show in February, but it was a snowstorm. Uh-huh. I still went, and we'll have to talk about that. Just It was a really cool experience. Sure. 16th birthday. Just, you know, I don't want to hog this all up. Yeah. Um, and then it was WrestleFest 3 in March, and that also was followed by the last SCAW show. It would have been a couple days, maybe weeks after. That was the day before WrestleFest 3. There's BYT. Uh-huh. 
That is Abyss. Abyss. That would have been in April. Uh -huh. That's BYT. That's so there, Out of Control 2. There are some clips on here, like that clip that we're going to get into here in a little bit, that uh, actually are not during the time period we're talking about. This video kind of extends. Um, just so people know, this is a video made by Lee Andrews yes. for Sean Phoenix. Correct. Steve. Um, was Lee at WrestleFest too? He was. Yeah, he wrestled Kale. Um, yeah. See, I think that I... For some reason, I'm thinking the first time I met Lee was at BYT. No, it was it was Russell Fester. Yeah, maybe the first time I actually talked to Lee. Was Probably. At BYT. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure a lot. Because you had of... met you had met him at that point, so right. by November you were you know, you right. know who he was. Because right. Lee was also breaking in around the same time as you. You guys were the birds and the bees. You did all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. His first um, show was BYT, the same as me. Uh huh. Was he also a Russell Fix kid? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is the best of Sean Phoenix video that's essentially just going through. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest here. The reason why uh, Ed and I both felt the way we felt whenever we knew that you were eventually going to be coming around to wrestle for us is because of this video. Oh, so geez. we saw the potential. We're like, holy shit. Like, this is the guy we need. Like, we, right. have, we have to have that dude with us so that he could show us how to do that and so that people can see us doing that because they already know him so like a lot of the shit is just we just were like damn this is this guy lives 10 minutes from us you are know? you sure you weren't thinking of me versus kale no i specifically because there's footage so that's there. the comeback right i specifically saw you versus kale and that's what made me okay, excited okay. i was gonna say because oh, okay i get what you're saying because right. it has footage from the first run at nww right exactly so me specifically, yes, it was you versus Kale. But whenever it was you coming back around and Ed showed was like, Ed this. Yes. Okay, I didn't met Ed at that point. Right. So I already I had had this video. I knew right. what it was all about. And right. I was showing him and he was like, Oh snap. <laughs> like that this is a dude. What do we do about <laughs> this, you know? Um and it's cool uh to see all the people that you got to wrestle in this short amount of time, like a year total. Yes, and uh, not to hog this up because I really don't want this to be all about me. I know Dom hasn't had a chance to talk. But <laughs> I, I mean, I wasn't really around during this, so um, it's just, I'm like learning. Right, right. Um, it was really cool going from eighth grade, watching these guys on on the internet, thinking, wow, I really want to be as good as these guys, uh -huh. to I, was, I would watch those videos so often that I would find myself humming the songs from the music videos Andy made from class to class at Alderdice, because I know one, you know, in, in any of my classes, to end of that year meeting them at BYG4, then to the following year getting to wrestle with them, essentially all in a year. I was like, this is insane. Like, it felt like a Disney Channel movie. <laughs> Absolutely. It's funny, because, like, I was tagging along for all this shit, and, like, I didn't know anybody or care about anyone. <laughs> the like, I'm going in. Right. Every everybody's equal at this point but i did i i fell in love with jay yeah jay was cool i mean i think that that match that main event match at uh wrestle fest yeah yeah it's like that guy definitely I think, I think more honestly i think i was more a fanboy of jay than i was kale yeah i, think I just like the way kale dressed maybe yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah I, I've, I think jay's also a dickhead like me so we kind of had that same personality. I could not agree more. Yeah. We're really close to me telling you how I feel about that. <laughs> real, so, real quick, I want to just say that I definitely showed both you, Dom, and JP the XWA videos I'm talking about. Just I would have showed you that. And Dom, I remember specifically because the video showing you, it was like 15 minutes long. I was like, dude, watch this. And I remember you saying like, oh, but you know, if it's this long, you know what that means? editing is going to be bad and i was like <laughs> wait a second wait do you see this and you were like blown away that the wrestling was good and the editing was oh, phenomenal snap. that's great yeah i remember specifically i actually did a lot of that stuff with uh the guys that we end up getting in with but it was a lot the similar story with jp where ed and i were very into caring about who was who on the backyard wrestling link and the other three main roster people that we had didn't even know like they were like whatever you're doing is fine we'll we'll wrestle with you but like you know so that's like a, i'm sure a common thing throughout the link like if you knew about it and cared about it you knew about it and cared about it and if you didn't you just kind of didn't you know until you met the people and you ended up like maybe making friends or what have you um as we saw in there there was a couple clips of the base not in josh's yard but before it was not in josh's yard it moved to your house for a little bit do you remember right. how it got there nope no i, I mean good 
sorry to cut you off. The idea for the base was to bring in out of towners. Uh huh. And I guess we did the KPW show, and Josh's mom wasn't too stoked about kids in the yard that she didn't know wrestling. That us. makes sense. And she was like, "I don't want you guys bringing in people I don't know." Yep. And at this point, you had met people, um, like KPW and everything. You're like, "We can just put it in my yard. Like, we'll do it." Like, right. kind of as a like a given the metaphorical middle finger to that situation. Like, <laughs> you can't dictate what's going on in my yard. Yeah, and you're right. like, yeah, my parents won't care. So I was like, sick, not only that, but like your yard is so much flatter too. Right. And um, we were like all gung-ho about it because we were going to get to have out-of-towners, even if that essentially meant, you know, even if we weren't, weren't doing SCAW, we could have out-of-towners and do I feel show. like we did have... We had one show. Yeah, I was going to say, we had like yeah. a little super show yeah well not a super show but it was just a scaw show at your house so uh parents initially cool with it always cool with it yeah my parents were always cool with it they didn't care they thought it was cool i guess yeah it was just there it was part of the deal so like there was really no like need to remove it from your yard at any point other than other than you know just falling out of it everyone else really didn't care yeah and the one show that happened uh on your yard was a show that not too long after that, I, for the first time, got my eyes on. It was the first time that I'd ever seen any media or n- known that any of this shit even existed, and it was through uh, Quinn. Right. So I'm becoming great friends with Quinn at this time, and we've hung out pretty much every single day nonstop for like six months. And one day he's just randomly like, hey, you want to see this video I got? And it's him wrestling you in JP's front yard, to dollar ninety nine wine, yep. yeah. Like for the base of my yard, I don't necessarily remember wrestling on it. I remember like just moving the trampoline over, doing like six thirties off the trampoline onto the base, and like uh-huh. I re- went out literally at any point in the day and would just go neck bump for like fifteen minutes straight. Yeah, really. By myself, just, and that, yeah. It, and that was, makes so much sense to see coming up here shortly. But that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, never a need to move it, but. From what I remember, your front yard is not really conducive to super show atmospheres. Right. You're in a very confined, nice little neighborhood right, right on a street. Right. Like, I could not imagine something that would happen on the backyard wrestling link right. happening in your front yard. Correct. And it was it was in a front yard. Yes. Yeah. Not a backyard. Right. Yard, and this so. whole this is a backyard wrestling retrospective podcast. So we, we shouldn't be talking uh, about that, it, we honestly. should not be talking about it. Right. I mean, wow. Josh's was like his side yard then. That's true. Yeah, very true. Wow. That is true. I guess mine was we're the only f- real backyard we we're did. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Front yard. Well, wrestling. there goes the podcast. We'll see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was around that time where I guess I show up, right? Yes. So that show at, at JP's would have been March of 2007. Uh-huh kind of fell out of it and then the base was just i don't know what the deciding factor of hey well josh was getting trained at this point um and it was just like you know what like it's just why you know let's just get rid of it like we're not even doing this anymore let's get out of your front yard and then fast forward like the summertime um quinn was like yo i think i know where we can the place where we can take the base and i was kind of like excited but at the same time i had plans to stop wrestling soon to right. start training because yeah. when i was 16 um so i was like yeah cool like you can have it like i'm done with it you know yeah so uh the place that he knew was the place that we can have some fucking super shows right like if we're gonna do something we're gonna do it and uh we're gonna do it in the woods and we're gonna do it behind my apartment building and that means me i'm rick i'm sick rick the kid with the hot bars and with t-dub squared we some major rock stars that's damn right (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah so at this time i met quinn and we're hanging out a lot. He shows me that video. We go through the motions of deciding, like, is this something that I can do? You know, is it, can I get involved with what they're doing somehow? And whenever the answer to that was essentially no, because there was no more right. of doing, there you wasn't know. It wasn't us. Um, Quinn's like, well, how about we just see if, uh, if you have fun with this? He he says that we could maybe have the base. Like, that's essentially what he got at. And uh, we went to check out the spot in the woods. Uh, I immediately thought of it. I don't know why I knew it was there, but I just knew it was there. And I'm like, I'm going to go. You know, this, this little path right here leads to something. So we went down there. I looked around. I was like, does this fit? And he was like, I think it'll fit there. So that's whenever, uh, essentially around that time is when I get introduced to you at the car show. 
Which I also want to point out how, how hilarious is it that we've been saying about how like pseudo unreliable Quinn has been. He's just like, yeah, I'll do it, whatever. And then he was the one to like kind of keep it alive. Right. No, yeah, that's, <laughs> he's the but fucking like, bridge. Almost inadvertently, without telling anybody though. Right. Yeah. Like he made his his way about moving the base, but like a lot of us didn't even know. We didn't know Rick yet. Right. So like, was he was he like being like hey we'll have a roster and we'll have wrestlers or like what was he talking about absolutely nothing so (laughs) what it was was we can have the base and steve might wrestle too and if steve wrestles jp will probably wrestle too i didn't know dominic existed i didn't know josh existed the only thing that i knew was that quinn wrestled you in his front yard i didn't know etw was a thing right and i was just like damn this kid's got fucking gear and he's making music videos and wrestling Quinn in someone's front yard, I, I should know everything about this man yeah. and I know nothing about him. Like, <laughs> he's got this whole secret second family that I've never met before. Right. But even, yeah, even as we were doing it, JP is the only other person that I knew had anything to do with wrestling at all outside of Quinn. I was going to ask him on the next episode and I'm sure I will whenever he gets in the room, but like there has to be some reason there was a disconnect, right? So like, Dominic, why weren't you wrestling at the time? Like, do you remember? I, you know, so I can't for sure. Yeah. Because I don't remember a lot of the in between stuff. Like seeing that that SCAW versus KPW show. Like I do remember doing that, uh-huh. and I do remember wrestling here and there. And then I do remember the base moving to JP's. I want to say maybe I wrestled on the base at JP's, but I can't. I can't say for sure. Right. So when it disbanded. I wasn't communicating with Quinn much, uh-huh. so my only thought would be is I, I was either working on music, uh-huh. like I started doing that, or... No, you wouldn't have been at that point. I think you were just uh, what, out, out of it. You have your like official... What year, what year is this? It's sort of 2007. 2007, yeah. yeah. So you, did, we and I, you and I didn't start the music until 2008. No, because yeah, I, I started... I didn't do anything until March of 2008. It's completely unrelated, but when Dominic started music... He just recorded himself on his cell phone, just screaming really loud. That's true. And he would be like, he'd be like, "Yo, listen to this." And I'd be like, yeah, you just hear. And I'm like, "Yeah, dude, that sounds great." Hell yeah! It, it was the way to start. <laughs> so, I, I, I just, I just think you were just. Uh, I think you were dating Lindsay at the time, and I just think that that had your interest. Probably, so yeah. If that would have been a year, yeah. I mean, it might have been. She would have been my first girlfriend, right. so I would have been. Yeah, probably if it was during the school year too. Exactly. But I definitely don't like I don't remember feeling any type of way about not wrestling anymore and it was weird because it was such a big part of my life. Like now like looking back at ETW like uh-huh. it was encapsulating. Like it's what I woke up to do. It's how I felt and then you can see us get older and you can kind of see that imagination drift away and mm-hmm. then play pretend drift away right. and it gets serious um so it probably took some you know coming around but also like someone had to pick it back up and yeah. it certainly wasn't going to be me because i was clearly i was probably dating someone and uh-huh. getting into other things like i'm sure that like my interests were soaring in 10 different directions at this time yeah you know so, so like who knows if it would have been brought up to you you might have said okay for a time or two but at the, you i think i would have been i think i would have been into it i think i think it's just hard because um i i think i mentioned it on the last episode potentially how i felt disconnected from the base uh uh-huh. because i was like I didn't wrestle on it for the first show, so right. it never kind of like was something I spent a lot of time on. Like right. I had to get from the HWC level of wrestling to the base level of wrestling immediately without a lot of time to do it. Uh-huh. Um, so I, I would just assume that I just was like, let's do the most athletic things I can think of and the things that look cool and uh-huh. we'll just call it a match. You right. know, that's... But it, it's very hard to say exactly. I probably watched wrestling religiously, yeah. though, at the time. Yeah, I, I I have other things that I'm doing. So, like, when the thought of wrestling comes up, it's not like a front focus thing yeah. at all. Like, it's you don't a, feel like you're missing out on anything. No, either. no. And that, I mean, it's kind of it's it is what it is because I I mean it's gonna happen either uh-huh. way. But like the resurgence of it was extremely fun because I was so hands off. Uh huh. Um, and I didn't have to commit any of that other mental 
uh, stress to it. So it it became fun again very quickly. It just, I, I guess you know you needed time uh-huh. away yeah. from it. Gotta miss it, right? Yeah. So whenever that was going on, uh, JP came with him. Um, do you remember why you what you were like he said you were just doing whatever you were rolling? Yeah, man, I just went with the flow. Uh-huh. Um, I just. He said, "We're gonna we're gonna take this base into the woods," and I like building shit. And yeah, I'm like, cool. Yeah, right. Yeah, like didn't I, even care. Let's ride. I had fun with it in my front yard. I'm sure I have fun with it in someone else's. Yeah, right. So I definitely. think also your parents were probably kind of you know like, okay, this is lasting too long, and you guys don't even use this because I um, vaguely remember you telling me. I do remember this. my dad basically saying like, if you're not gonna use that thing, uh-huh. like, it's killing my grass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like to get my lawn back which did take a while to grow back but I, I, I do like remember that i yeah, remember it took, it took yeah a while. i remember there was some push to I get mean, it they, out had, of they there. ended up like they dug it out and turned it into a pond eventually right that uh yeah, that, that, was that was in the other side okay. of the yard we okay. made a patio though we did yep. I, I did that. yeah I right for no reason just made my front yard a patio I right don't, i don't know why it looked cool. i remember it was cool to there. hang out on yeah. that yeah i like but yes you and i met at a car show in lincoln place down at the elks it would have been summertime yeah the was always over quinn's house all directly behind my house right Dollar General now, right? Yes. Yep. Which, yeah. is, which is funny because literally that car show, how, how symbolic is it? Literally behind your house, middle, literally across from Quinn's house. Uh, and, and Quinn right. brought it to you. Yeah. You were the bridge between both of these. Wait, generations. so I didn't know this. So you went with Quinn to the car show? Correct. And he was like, oh, hey, Steve, you're here. Yes. No, Quinn had told me. Ahead of time. Uh, see, he didn't tell me that yeah, he told him. he had him. told me. <laughs> oh. He said, hey, I think I know where we can take uh, the base. Quinn, um, Quinn's a fucking genius. Yeah. It sounds like Quinn was just like this little either, I don't want to be mean, but like very stupid and never connected the dots. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> or, or was like conniving. And he's yeah. like, I'm going to make this super magical thing. But Spring what Adams. 14, 15 year old is going to be like? It, I don't thinking even, of all we, this well, we were 16, yeah, 16 yeah. okay but, a little smarter right little smarter. but it just i think we're like, dumber i think we're, we're so removed yeah. from everything that happened before him and i are friends and yeah. now like we're two fucking juggalos that's gotta trying be it, to like, yeah. like we smoke cigarettes all the time we fucking <laughs> try to smoke weed we get ripped off by somebody that went to your high school and came to quinn's house and busted him for 20 bucks and we didn't even get to smoke that <laughs> one it was some dude it sucked you went through a time yeah so like all that was going on and quinn was like finding who he eventually was as a person like mm-hmm. that's when that was going on him and i together were like growing up so i don't think that any of this even had a thought process. I was, I think he was just like, well, Eric kind of wants to wrestle. I can ask my friend. And then he hits him up and like, Hey, are you doing anything with like, I just think it was so nonchalant, you know, and not like intentionally either, but it's just like, it's just what it was. Hey, I got this. this. You want to do this? It's also possible that he knew that he could see the writing on the wall. Hey, we're not too passionate about this anymore. Josh is training. He's going to be training soon. We're not using this. Hey, we can take this. And we uh, maybe there were rumblings of we have to take this down. Yes. What do we do with it? Right. And then he realized that you would take it. And I definitely know for sure he told me about this because I would not have been to the car show if, you know, for no reason. Okay. So you intentionally went there with the idea of meeting me. Intentionally. Yeah. Because I don't care for cars. Right. <laughs> yeah, me neither. My, honestly. Dad, my dad loves them. His and because of that, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> right. So he takes me down there. We meet. We did the thing. And then we, this is go time. We're doing it. We're moving the base. The story of us moving the base is a pretty fun one. And for me, you guys were an end, a uh, means to an end, which right. was me being able to start wrestling. Right. And like, I even had a roster that I had in, in my mind of who might eventually do it. And they are people that did eventually do it. So it worked out. But the promise of getting this base, the only promise was getting the base. Right. And it wasn't just that I can have it. It's that you guys were also willing to help to me. deliver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So not only could it be mine, you we guys were going to show me how it works. Yeah. Pull, pull it down, put it back up. Fuck yeah, I'm down. You know, like how could that deal be any better for me? I don't have to give up a dollar. I get to start a wrestling fed. I get you guys to show me and move the fucking thing. Like, yes, of course, I'll take, I'll sign up for that again tomorrow. I hadn't know? really considered that you right. had such a good deal right. out of that and the fact that we showed you we didn't just dump it in the no. field uh-uh. fits his personality well <laughs> <laughs> i'll take it so we're moving it right and we all meet at jp's house at like 10 o'clock in the morning it i stayed over quinn's house day, it was hot as shit that day uh we have your family van 
Yes. With the trailer. trailer yep. Once again, uh, we load up the plywood, take trips over. We load up uh, the tires, take I trips say over. We did like probably like ten trips. It has to be, no doubt about it. Because um, the trailer wasn't that big. It, no, it, this wasn't like a U-Haul trailer. This is like a borderline a wagon. It, 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 <laughs> like, was, a, it was like a motorcycle trailer. A yeah. Homemade trailer. Essentially, we got it as a kid for our bikes. Right. But it can be, it can fit dirt bikes. You know, it's not like a you know a massive thing. So in my head, what we're doing is we're moving my future wrestling ring into the woods by my apartment. In the heads of the people that lived at the apartment, <laughs> we were dumping garbage in the woods by the shit ton. <laughs> like just pulling up in a van, throwing a bunch of shit in the woods, coming back out and doing it all over again every hour for like six hours straight. Oh my you know? gosh. <laughs> it would um, look a certain way. So by the time we get to like trip five or six, uh, we are greeted at the entrance way to the base by a couple of very nice gentlemen in suits. <laughs> and, uh, these gentlemen are, uh, detectives. <laughs> they, they work for the police department. They're detectives there to see what the fuck we're doing. I was 16. You were 16, whatever. We had your dad though. Yeah. Your dad did a lot of talking, if I remember. Pittsburgh paramedic. Yep. Feels like he knows all the policemen because of that. No doubt about it. So he did the speaking. And what it came to be was I was under the impression that the people that owned the house that was being built up the road yeah. were the people that owned the property right. that the base was on. So were the police also under the impression that that was the case. So we said, we're all the way over here. Is this not like public woods? Can we not do this here? And he was like, no, actually the people building the house over there own this property. And I guess it was either you or your dad or somebody said, we'll go ask them. Coincidentally, they were there working on the house at right. that moment. Right. And we went and asked. I, I remember we went in to ask him and then I want to say the guy like wasn't wearing a shirt or whatever. Yeah, right. And we were like, hey, do you mind if we like build this contraption like over in the woods and like whatever, like we'll be like out of your way. And he's like, oh, all the way over there by the apparents? Yeah, I don't know. That. That's them. Right. <laughs> so we're like, cool. He doesn't care. Exactly. They, he thinks mm -hmm. it's them. They think it's his. Perfect. Yep. So we told the cops that and they probably took us at our word because why would you not? Like we clearly did exactly what you asked right. us to do. And so we're we, very good detectives. Right. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> right. The, the suit they were all they had shit. going. <laughs> I, I, Just a lot of bullshit. <laughs> I always thought they were FBI. I, I felt like they were way more. I mean, detective is an important rank. Yeah, but I thought like it was like very very it, very it, serious it could have been it could have been probably because i remember i came out i saw i saw them talking uh -huh. and i was like i have the right to remain silent and i was like <laughs> stop stop <laughs> why and then quinn looked at me and goes i've never seen your dad so serious <laughs> i'm just being a I goof right I, yep. and then he's like steven stop these are like this is the fbi uh -huh. a detective i always thought it was FBI. Like, continue, right continue we're we're just go right back to it we, we're still just moving the stuff right and on this day, this is, I think, my first time meeting JP. I haven't hung out with Steve for any extended period of time until this day. And But just through all these experiences, man, I like both of you a lot. I was really, I was happy to meet both of you. I was happy you guys were doing all this shit. It was fucking fantastic. The one line that stuck in my head forever that, like, I will never forget that Steve said this. We're taking the carpets back to the, the base, and we're trying hard to not, like, pull it through the mud. Because if you know anything about getting from the parking lot to our base, there was at least one mud puddle that was pretty much always there that we could not get rid of. Steve had a piece of carpet that he was pulling behind him, and it wasn't up off the ground. And I'm like, yo, you're dragging that. And he turns to me real quick and goes, you're a dragon. And I <laughs> lost my mind. Dude. Like, it's still burnt into my memory. I, he was, like, mad that I was telling him he was dragging the carpet, but also had to be, like, funny and clever. And I, I, I forgot all about that until this now. And another thing that I will never forget, I'm sh I don't know. You must have been in the car with us, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're driving. It is so hot. I guess the air conditioning wasn't working. I don't. Maybe there were just too many of us in the car uh -huh. that we were driving with the van doors open. Yep. Yep. Do you remember where I'm I going do. with this? I do. So we're driving, and uh, there happens to be a gentleman on a bicycle who is on the right side of the road, driving with the trap, riding with the traffic. Uh huh. And we pass them. Yes, we do. And JP is in the middle passenger chair. There's three rows of seats in the van. Let me guess, also driving? No. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> my dad was. My dad was. <laughs> so, right, right, right. You do some weird No, he, he was in the, he was, so he was right at the, at the sliding door, right? On the right side. 
We just passed this guy. And JP, in his infinite wisdom, says, ha, 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 wouldn't it be funny if, like, when we pass that guy and he turns his body 90 degrees and he kicks out the, kicks out the thing, right? He's like, wouldn't it be funny if I just, like, went like this as we passed him? And at that exact moment, Dominic, the dude passed us. And he was inches away from being kicked by JP. Oh, my God. And the dude... It's going to happen. The like du- <laughs> The dude passed, and he had, like... I'll never forget this. He had, like, a fish look on his face, and he was, like, still in motion, and he, like, rotated his head so quickly <laughs> to look at us. Like, what the hell did you do that for? Like, there was no, like, there was no reason why anybody would like, do that. Oh, I, there was a bird I was trying to kick. Right, it. right. Oh, I didn't yeah. even see you, man. Like, Sorry. it was 100%... <laughs> a kick out of the door as we passed this guy on the bike with the purpose <laughs> of kicking him as yeah. we passed it. There's nothing else you could have said to no. this guy and if he wanted the, to stop. That's and the, the, like, that's the, but I think I think my dad goes, sorry, he was just goofing around. <laughs> a lot of goofing around at this time. Right. A lot of goofing around at the wrong time. But like, right. uh, like it. But, but, but you know, like he, we weren't checking, you know, behind us so he yeah. had no reason to think he would have caught up. Dude. Like why did he catch up so fast? And then there's no way to tell that guy to this day when you did that you did not have the intention of doing that it was a wouldn't it be funny if i did the exact thing i'm doing right now goes back goes back to the infinite saying pickles are great mm-hmm. until, until you're in one, one. <laughs> um, yeah. i'm sorry that i i've when when i was told that we were doing this and the chapters i said i'm sure nobody's going to remember this. I was clearly wrong, and I've been thinking about telling this story. Yep. It, it's, it, it's just something that follows me. I, I find a way to just do something stupid. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. We'll get into that. One thing, getting, <laughs> one thing I'm getting from all of this is I really need to go figure out what the fuck I was doing in 2007. <laughs> yes. Because I don't know. My right. Face. Yeah, man, that's probably it. But, like, 2007, man, is... I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Could blank spot in your you. brain. It's yeah. just 2007. You need to go figure that one out. So you guys <laughs> move the base over. We have those times. Shit happens. And now there's just a base in the woods. And w- none of us really know what's going on. I personally have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing with it. Or even really what I want to be doing with it. All I know is I'm really happy I got it, right? If only um, you would have known me. If only I would have had... <laughs> Somebody with a camera, first of all. That would have been huge. You notice there's two over there now? There are. How'd that second one get there? I'll tell you later. Yeah, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Dude, that uh, thing looks like it's from 1942. So it, <laughs> it was around this time, after the base got dropped there, and we start talking about what we're actually going to do, that NW2 was born. NW2 is not my brainchild at all. The base is at my house. I'm the one that wanted it. I did all the the angling to have it be at my place you know but nw2 was just essentially i didn't care steve do whatever the hell you want at this point i was on my last legs right because i was also wrestling with esw traveling all over as we previously stated absolutely but now finally (laughs) i can get people to come in from out of town to wrestle yes that's what all of it was location meant to me absolutely so what's nw2 so at this point, you had kind of given me the reins. Yes. We were talking. Yes. And Not kind of. I, I essentially said, you come up with whatever you want, and then I'll just be the okay at the end. I remember specifically talking to you. I don't know how we came... I, I don't know if you came up with the, with the... I feel like maybe I came up with the name. You came up with the name. New Wave Wrestling. Yes. And you then 100%. We were, I even asked you, I was like, do you have any ideas for the name? And almost immediately, you said New Wave Wrestling. Almost immediately. But I don't know how I came right. up with that. But then we learned that there was already like a pretty like known NWW overseas. So we're like, let's just call it NW2. Yeah. Um, but uh, then I remember specifically talking to you about this. And I was like, okay, what do you want to do with this? And I was like, do you want to do storylines? You just want to wrestle. And I remember you saying you wanted to do like storylines and stuff. And I remember specifically saying, I don't want to do storylines because I've just done them for the past three years and i know how much of a headache it could be Uh just the aspect of like reliability and stuff like that right absolutely and i was like you know i personally don't think we should but whatever you want to do and you said let's do it and i was like all right well then i will do it and i will make it 
you know, like a big deal, you know, right. I had, you know, like I, I want it to be, uh-huh. well, I'm passionate about this and Absolutely. I want it to make sense. And then, um, the first pseudo show happened. Right. And it was, so my train of thought throughout the, the beginning part of this is because this is going to be mine and Quinn's thing, we're going to be the one that's doing the title feud. Like, I already knew that you weren't in it for the long haul, and I assumed that JP was just doing whatever you were doing. So, like, if you were there hanging out with us, that JP would, but as soon as you left, that he would leave. And, you know, honestly, I probably didn't need to assume that, but that's just, like, first impressions. I'm just thinking, like, well, JP's only here because his friend wanted to come do this. Yeah, he's his friend. Right. So, um... I wish I would have been like, yo, JP, I mean, I know these guys are fucking going pro, but, you know, how about you still come do this with us, like, every now and then, you know? Right. Um, and if I would have just maybe thrown that out there, maybe eventually you're like, hey, Dominic, I'm still doing this. Do you want to come? Like, who knows what right. course it goes on if I just have that simple conversation? And honestly, one of the reasons that simple conversation didn't happen is because I fucking did not like this guy at all right Wow, here. I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not like him. He... He would say stuff that he did not believe that he was against just to make you mad. And there is nothing that I dislike more as a person, even to this point in my life, than somebody that's trying to make me angry for no reason. (laughs) Like, just just to get me angry. Like, that's all you want to do is you just want to see me mad. Well, guess what? Now I'm fucking mad about it. Like, fuck you. You know what I mean? And I'm just over here like, that guy's fucking mad. And then (laughs) making that face about that same face. and be like, oh, look at you. You're all pissed off now aren't you yeah, right. <laughs> how dare you react reasonably right. Dude, I, I honestly i'm still that way to this day I, yeah. I love to argue even if i don't believe it i'll win that argument right because yeah. it's so exhausted it's yeah. like a challenge man it's a challenge to me. i dig it did politics you should be in a room when me and my brother argue it's <laughs> oh my gosh I, well, I it heard actually you, sounds entertaining you, yeah, you, we were fun. both arguing about the Paul brothers at WrestleMania, <laughs> right. and you guys just kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Just like, geez, it's not even worth it. <laughs> and then I probably was arguing against my argument just because I wanted to win that argument. Yeah, no doubt about it. And so, like, because you didn't know us very well, all you did was that. Right, you were right. just like, I'm just going to piss these dudes off and oh, give them yeah. middle fingers and what have you, right? 100%. And uh, so because of that, I guess that's probably why I didn't go out of my way to try. And you know what? I was 16 years old myself, so we all had personality shit going on at 16 years old, you know? No doubt about it. But it's just like at the time, I was like, I don't like to be mad. This guy likes to make me mad. Nah, not for me. (laughs) Um, So up until the first show, though, I hadn't experienced that yet. Um, I, I just thought you guys were cool as fuck. And we have this first show. And the very first match ever is me versus Quinn for the NW2 championship. And Which, I I don't have video of that. I don't think it exists anywhere. I just want to point out the fact that you never crown a champion on your first show. I see that all the time yeah. in pro shows. So we're already off to a good a good start a on good, this. A good bad start. Yeah. Um and then immediately following me versus Quinn, I get introduced to B cubed. Correct. Which the- I don't know why he was in town for this uh-huh. other than he just like, you know, maybe I just told him like, Hey, you know, we have a new place to wrestle. Uh-huh. Um, and I was like, okay, well, if we're doing this new, new show, I'm going to switch my character. I'm uh-huh. going to, I'm going to take what happened and act like I'm going to be heel. I was like, well, I can't ruin Sean Phoenix's legacy wrestling in a field now, right. which none of that is true. It's just I wanted to have a new wrestling name to fly under the radar so Absolutely. The pros couldn't find me. Uh-huh. So why do I have a new name? Well, I have a new character. Okay, well, I don't want to get my gear messed up. So, I'll, okay, well, I'll kind of be this, like, rebellious punk kid. Absolutely. And that's kind of where that came from. And then with the idea of um, having storylines, easiest storyline you can do is a faction, especially right. when the fact that um, it was me, JP, and Quinn. It's like, okay, well, there's a, there's a common thread there. And that was, we were all from ETW. So we're going to band together as heels uh-huh. against this new company. Right. And that's what the and, angle was. And unfortunately for me, this new company was just me. Right. <laughs> the, the whole thing was seven dudes against Sick Rick. And that's all, that's, that's literally all we had, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I feel it for what it is a thousand percent. And even just here watching this, I mean, 
at this time, the match that I had right before this on July 23rd, 2007, was the first wrestling match I ever had in my life. I never fucking did anything. Right. Um, I never. I probably bumped on this thing a couple times. Okay, so that spot. You know how, like, after you watch these videos a lot, I mean, I don't know if a lot of you guys have, but after you watch them a lot, eventually you don't see the match through your own eyes anymore. You see it through the camera lens because you've watched it on video so many times right. that, like, your actual memory of it, of you being there, is no longer there, right. and you just see that. Well, in that moment, I see that in my mind's eye, you know? Like, I remember being there to see that Canadian Destroyer, and I watched it happen through my actual eyes and I don't only remember the camera. Like I might've even been on camera. You might've been recording. That, right. Possibly. Right. But I remember it happening through my eyes, you know, like right. I, I was, I point. lived in the moment for yeah. that spot. And I was really, I loved it. I thought it was cool as shit. And I'm like, damn, these guys are doing all that fucking gangster stuff. They're out here killing it. Right. But at the same time, I didn't realize to what extent you guys had, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Experience. Right. Uh, I I didn't know how I didn't know the the wrestle figs and the backyard wrestling link, right. and I didn't know the three years of ETW and the traveling all over the place. All I knew is this dude from Philly came out here to wrestle you, and you met him randomly on some online shit, right? So I'm like, oh well, this is cool. This dude fucking got his own gear and stuff. Like, goddamn, right. what's going on here, right? And I remember thinking they're doing some cool spots, but it's nothing that I'm not doing. <laughs> <laughs> and and I very vividly remember that thought in my head. I'm like, yeah, I could do those same spots next time and I'm doing the same thing. So what? <laughs> but I remember that Canadian and I'm like, okay, I can't do that. Like that's that's something that I don't know how to do. I don't have the the chops for that one. But um this this match is awesome and I like I still I hear the song that's going on in the background while like these spots are happening because I watched it so many times because this is the first show that happened right. in my yard and it was this B cubed versus Sean Phoenix match. Um, I hated B cubed <laughs> and he was a lot like JP and like JP said earlier, he bonded with B cubed. Yeah. They got along so well because they were similar <laughs> in that manner. Dude, fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah. Dude, for real. No, I just talked to him today. He's doing real good. He's got kids and shit. He said that he's uh, following the PA stereotype because he busted three kids out. So, yeah. Dude, he's a Flyer fan. And he is. Fuck, that's... Yeah, that just makes him worse than us. And he always claimed to be better than you, but he was always worse than you. Right. Uh, this is the debut of the Blockbuster <laughs> here. So I go back to Quinn's house this night after this is over, and I remember talking with Steve on AIM or possibly through text message conversation or whatever, and I just remember being so fucking mad about them saying that their match was better than ours <laughs> like and they they made it a point they did the backyard wrestling thing were better than you and you know it is what it is you guys absolutely were but like we were 16 i took stuff personally right, you took right. stuff personally like stuff was taken seriously from one end and maybe not so much right. from another i i can just say i not denying that yeah i don't remember that right you remember it so i'm sure it happened mm -hmm. at the time I remember you rubbed us the wrong way. Yeah. We felt that you were super egotistical. Okay. And like you had this, um, like this undeserved, like, like, yeah, I'm like, you just said, I can do all that. Like I, right. you maybe not have vocalized that at the time, but there was something about you that rubbed us the wrong way. Sure. And then it was kind of like, I, I mean, you know, for, it could have been Jay that said that, you know, yeah. like, I don't remember that. Uh huh. I'm sure it happened. I just don't remember it. But that that was all. It's just kind of like, yeah. Oh yeah, you think you're you're all big and bad? Yeah, but you see our match, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. And you know, I, who cares, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. At the end of the day, neither of us should have given a fuck. But exactly. what we did because we were 16 and emotional. So I now had a chip on my shoulder. And uh, is this the, was that the first show? First ever. So that was the first time that that base was wrestled on in the woods. Correct. That it was filmed to be shown. Okay. Yes. Interesting. I, That's. That's cool. I didn't know that. I also want to point out the fact that this would have been the second time I've wrestled Jay, um, but it would have been the first time Jay has come to Pittsburgh and wrestled, which was would have been like two years in the making. Yeah, Going really. back to that trampoline, uh -huh. the base. Now, right. Okay, well, now it's at JP's house. Now, finally, it happened. And right. How cool is that? So... I already was like, fine, I'm going to prove myself then. You know, like, if you think I can't do it, I'm going to show you that I fucking can, you know? Right. And uh, 
I didn't know what I didn't know. Right, I was exactly. extremely ignorant to what wrestling is, was, and can be. All I knew was I liked Jeff Hardy. I liked ladder matches. I liked these <laughs> best of backyard wrestling tapes that Quinn showed me in his basement. That's what I knew. Right. And I, I now have the arena in which to do it. And I have people telling me that I can't do it or that maybe I shouldn't be doing it or whatever, you know? I don't think we would have ever said that. I mean, maybe we did if you remember. But no, like- I don't know. So, okay, that's I don't mean it to be like it was directly told to me in that manner. But the idea that was portrayed upon me was you are not good enough to be doing this. Was right, ETW right. on there? Yes. Yeah, that, so this, so, okay, so right. I got diagnosed with, with mono and I was like, okay, well... Yeah, I was told that my uh, my liver could you know enlarge or whatever. So like, yeah, that's yeah. why Josh couldn't wrestle because it's like dangerous. But I was like over it. Like I, I I remember once Jay left, I was sick. Like it just hit me out of nowhere. Uh-huh. And uh, you and Jay made out too much. I, well, that's the thing. Like I don't because I think my girl, I don't think we kissed once. <laughs> well, it's, it's even weirder because I think I was dating I was dating Sam at the time, and she was away at camp. So it wasn't Some even like camp. I got it from her. Right. But um, mono is not just a kissing disease. But either way, you can see on this sign here, you see the NW2 written in the background, the Phoenix on the top left. You got a little beastie at the bottom. It looks like there's no HWC. I, I, take, uh, I wasn't an I take, HWC guy. I take that personally that, see, it, that it wasn't destroyed. I see SCAW very clearly. <laughs> uh, do you know what this one was right here? I have no idea. Yeah, I can't even tell what that says. Maybe that says Cowboy Steve. And I want to say maybe <laughs> ESW. <laughs> Cowboy Steve. Could that be ESW? Yes. Yeah, and then over here it says like thanks for everything or something like that. Right. And then he writes goodbye in spray does, paint. Does and it then not say WCW at the bottom? Lights it on fire. Uh, he hits a little promo talking about mono here. and Baby face in a sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If I remember correctly, this um, is probably well, one of Folkland's sure best matches. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So basically, so, that yeah, means yeah, I couldn't agree more. In fact, and this is uh, <laughs> also Sick Rick's worst match and ever because it's the first one well. that's ever Look, been put to that? camera. The one before this wasn't even filmed. I am so underweight. Uh, I didn't want to get out of bed this morning. You are really skinny. You all came in skinny as fuck, except for Dominic was kind of looking nice by the time you showed up. That was my eye. That was my shine moment. Ed was skinny as hell. Deke the freak was skinny. Like, everyone was super skinny. And the thing is, like, I was kind of, like, chubby freshman year. And just, like, the way that my schedule was. Uh, And, like, I just walk in the hallways from the basement to the fourth floor. And, like, it's funny because, like, that gate... I'm going on a tangent now, but, like... That gave me a warped perception of what my body... Load dysmorphia. Yeah. 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 I was like, I need to look like this because I I don't don't have this, you know, baby fat anymore. So, speaking of baby fat, you were baby facing the crowd here after coming back as, like... I mean, I Probably. guess, like, definitely a heel because you turned you on Jay at the match. end, but nobody there yeah. Yeah. at this show yeah. saw that show, and, like, what? it might as well be two completely different universes. Yeah. But there was Jimmy P in the background over here. Uh, Quinn was at this show. Um, Deke the Freak was at this show. My ex was at this show. So, like, this is, like, the first, yeah. like, we're getting everybody together type right. of deal. Except Dom, because still, so, we're not reaching out that olive branch. Right. Dom didn't exist in I don't know where I'm at. I, don't, I didn't hear his name, and I hung out with Quinn constantly. I'll so, figure it out. So there's Sick Rick I'm tossing his digging. hat into the woods, being real mad about it. Also, I want to point out that I had every intention of wearing that mask for the J match, but uh, I couldn't find it when it was go time. Right. And it, I ended up finding it outside of the car so like i dropped it as we were packing it in to go over so i had every intention on wrestling in a mask now because i was trying to fly right. under the radar so uh i skipped through that whole match right there for the purposes of our viewers because fuck that match <laughs> like seriously it is just unwatchable best match man unwatchable um there was even a moment in the match where you left in something you didn't need to leave in and dropped an LOL on. Yeah, top of yeah, because I had no idea what it was, and I didn't either. But at the time, it was like it was clear that you were doing your thing for the link, but you yeah, could have taken yeah. it out of the match, you know. But she did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I could have not gotten as mad about it, but once again, it added the chip on my shoulder. But that was the thing is because I was under the impression that like you know you rub me the wrong right. way. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, we're I both was, rubbing each other the exactly, wrong way throughout like, this scenario. You, you and that's to, how you get mono. <laughs> <laughs> like, so that's what you're saying is not the feud you came up with. It's real life. Yeah, this is all real. All this stuff this is, is going so on. It's so funny how real. history just repeats itself. I know. <laughs> like, it's clearly a me problem. I've had issues I, no, with all no, three of No, no, I'm you. just saying like it goes from <laughs> first show. Piece of shit. I know. Immediately to aim. It's like first wrestling show. 
aim. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yep. Yeah. It's, dude, it, it couldn't be fun. So we, we, all right, so at this moment here, uh, old Folkland has me in a bow and arrow, and he's pulling real hard on it. I'm about to tap out, and at that moment, I get hit in the head by fucking Folkland with a what? goddamn stick. How There's is that two possible? of them. Jesus, and even the, Quinn's whoa, whoa, whoa. confused. The less talented version of Oakland hit right. you. Yes. Oh my God, who's Clearly. there? So he, he gives me the old boots great to the dome, and let me tell you about how much, not only this one, but every other one I took after this just fucking sucked. Like, every one of those hurt. There, there's no fun way to take it. Okay. Um, so here, here, here. Right, we gotta hear this. I like it. You pieces of shit. shit Quinn, you don't deserve yeah. one more lash. <laughs> See, I can't even talk. Because I'm pissed off. It. I've seen this. You mean, you this is great. Shit. Don't even deserve the last match from me. I could die. Why the fuck would I die for you idiots? You juggalos. You smoking pieces of shit. <laughs> I'm better than that. We're better Look than that. Look at JP. We don't drink. We're better I don't than smoke. That. We don't smoke. I well, do I don't that. care. Well, that's well, great. Well, be proud of yourself. Is this why JP's always been disconnected, disconnected from juggalo culture? Up. I what happened that day? <laughs> what happened? I do. You don't have fun. Don't blame Rick. <laughs> Maybe I hate jugglers. Me neither on that one. <laughs> and we don't chain smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Everyone the hatred for each that. other is what brought us all together in yeah. 2007. That that, let me just jump in. That that's completely yes, like yeah, but you guys suck. Right. Like I'm thinking, well, what does Rick have? Yeah, yeah. How can right. I? Storyline wise, what is my motivation? Oh, I love it. To, to divert. It's okay. So I took everything that Rick was. Yeah. And I point out that I'm not that. And right. And I try to get heat just because I see other people smoking. Yeah. Whatever. Yes. I had no intention on talking about like the smoking. Like maybe I did, but like I was. I would have said the, the whole idea was point. to kind of channel like Raven with absolutely, the flock, and then no doubt like, also turn into CM Punk and Ring of Honor. Yep. But, yep. No doubt about it. And that that was a hundred percent character. Yeah. And that not only was that character, but the crowd, while they, while, I mean, like Casey, I guess, knew you guys kind of through the grapevine. She went to Dice? Went to yeah. Dice. yeah, yeah. Um, but nobody knew you guys well enough to tell you guys apart. So whenever JP came out in the mask and wrestled the entire match, no one had any fucking idea right. that it wasn't Steve. There was no clue at all. So whenever Steve comes out of the woods. Except for when they were like, wow, this dude is good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this guy. Time. So much debut? better than the one that wrestled was the that Canadian. Was your debut? For, for yes. NW2. Yeah. Yes. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. What and the, and the match was really bad, and I almost hurt him twice. So where was... Now, you're there, and I'm still not there. Yes. Like, what was it. I doing? I'm going to... You were jerking off the spaghetti porn. I figured it, yeah. <laughs> honestly, I'm sure that happened. Right. Yeah, I mean... I believe that. Seven is How was the internet? Good enough. Facebook. Facebook <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Continue. Um, but that whole thing right there, I was supposed to be wrestling you that day, Correct, but you yeah. got mono. Yeah, so we worked the storyline into it was kind of like you know the idea was adding these members it was just not i couldn't tell you what the original plan was but i, thought I had that no, was, no idea what the original I, plan I, was. I thought that that was a really cool backup plan. yeah and then um so we did that and the next show that we had happened because zane came to town correct and when zane came to town it was your first time meeting no you met him already you had already known zane the during this time three. period yeah right um I didn't know who the hell or what the hell Zane was. I had no idea about any of this. Um, he was your friend. He came from Kentucky. And I guess the overall idea was that you were going to wrestle him at some point in the day. But we had a couple storyline things that we wanted to do yes. with me and you first. I might be wrong about this, but the first person from Pittsburgh that ever wrestled Zane was Quinn. That... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, fucking Quinn. Quinn gets to wrestle Zane before any of us. With me bringing in Zane as you know an affiliate, how yep. do I get to wrestle him? Which yep. at this point, I'm a hundred percent. I'm like, this is my last match. Like I'm done backyard wrestling. Right. This is it. Like I, you know, I go out with somebody. I, actually, holy shit, Zane and the Chad bridge to the gap before Combination Combat Kid. And oh really? Dude, this yeah, they're at BYE three. Sorry. So, but I've known Zane from WrestleFigs for all those years. So okay. Like, this is cool. Finally get to do this. Word. Yeah. So Zane was like, while he was always somebody that people wanted to wrestle, he wasn't the Zane that we eventually had, uh, like main eventing all of our shows. He wasn't one of the main event guys for, for the most yeah. part. Yeah. 
Yeah, because he was still technically a... He was kind of more of the mid-card on the ESW uh, tier. Right. Which is where I kind of was as well. Right. You know? Um. So, Zane, when he first came to town, I, did you meet him that weekend too, Dominic? Probably, but I... I don't know for sure. I definitely remember days hanging out with him, uh-huh. walking like behind the bowling alley with you guys and him and, you know, just hanging out around Lincoln Place. So it was either that time or the next time he came. Uh huh. But I'm not sure. Hanging around uh, Lincoln Place is what got you guys arrested, right? No, actually, Flagstaff. It was literally the day he arrived. Uh huh. We picked him up from the Greyhound station. And I was really, because my, my girlfriend at the time, like, I couldn't really see her too often. So we would find ways to see each other and we would go to Flagstaff often. And I was like, well, let's, you know, we don't watch the, which Flagstaff, for those who don't know, it's like a park and they, sh- they put up a movie screen, they put a movie in the park and it's free. Uh-huh. We would never watch the movie. We would always just like skateboard. Or right, right. Just, you know, do whatever our own thing. And I was like, well, let's go do this. So, you know, we'll make our own fun. And as you saw with this character, I'm also getting into graffiti in real life as well. Right. And then we pick up Zane and decide, hey, you know what? I'm really into graffiti. I have spray paint that I had purchased with Jay. Jay was 18 when Mm -hmm. I was underage. I couldn't even buy spray paint. So Jay bought all the spray paint for me. Like literally, I gave him the money right in front of the cashier. Uh She took it at Walmart. Hell yeah. Said all these colors and shit like that, and like this. And Alex is really into graffiti as well. Right. Alex being Zane. Uh Oh. I remember the. I don't even think we were spray painting at the time. We had spray painted, um, like on our way back to the dinosaur park. And I'm pretty sure it was actually me. Yeah, it would have been the dinosaur park. You're right. Which is the park adjacent to the. uh, It's in the general vicinity. Right. And I'm pretty sure it was actually me. I pulled out a can of spray paint and spray painted a bench. In the dinosaur park. Yes, but Alex and I had also <clears throat> spray painted. Uh, there was a little tunnel, just a pathway tunnel. Uh-huh. Right. We graffitied that. I used a paint marker and graffitied some of the the playground equipment, um, climbing in crazy areas, just doing it because people marker shit like that all the time. I uh-huh. think big deal. Like, oh, cool! I get to do this, and I get to feel like you know, like get this thrill that I'm into now. And then I don't know what's going on, but then you got bored, and I don't know what motivated you but you were like let me do something and like you <laughs> went into my book bag and you grabbed a, a can of spray paint and you spray painted the bench right and i'm like all right cool you know no big deal uh fast forward to like 10 minutes later 10 15 minutes later right do you remember how this mm-hmm. went this guy comes up street clothes just casually because it's like eight o'clock at night right right and uh also i remember there was these two like random people that like walked the pathway to go down through the tunnel that we just spray painted we're like shit like they're gonna smell it like we yeah. just spray painted it right then this guy comes up and he's like we're spray paint guys and i'm like in my infinite wisdom what spray paint <laughs> <laughs> and he's like don't play dumb where's the spray paint and he pulls out his necklace which had his badge on it and i was like shit damn it we're getting arrested my immediate we didn't get arrested my <laughs> immediate arrested. thought was those people called the cops right right my dad always taught me which first of all there was you me alex my then girlfriend Sam, I think her one friend Laura. It's so funny because like I don't remember that relationship at all. It's a blur. But thinking about this is coming back to me. Um, there was like five of us and maybe like one of their friends. Uh-huh. So like they were just there. Like we couldn't have scattered, right? And like we all would have ran to the same place because yeah, I right. you know we were you know the same car. And my dad always said you know if you run from the cops it's just going to be harder. Just you know in, in life wisdom, not because I was a troublemaking kid, but right. just, you know just. I mean, and, and that's a, truth. That's good. Yeah. Which is, I absolutely 100% disagree with these days. Well, yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm the cops. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're not going to make I'm it very gonna, far, bro. Right, right. Um, <laughs> so then I was like, okay, you know, they're here. And I showed him my book bag uh-huh. and he like confiscated it. I was like, can I at least get my book bag back? And I, I, he said, yes, whatever. Yeah. And then like, it was like the Dane Cook skit where like the car accident bit. You remember that, Dom? You're when, big into Dane Cook. When everybody's shoes. coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it and I came outside. And that's what it was like because the entire area, if we were a clock, we were the center of the clock. Oh there my. was a police officer coming from one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four, all around the whole clock face, circling in on us. God damn. I don't, I don't know where they came from. <laughs> they thought you had the Declaration of Independence. They must have. Um, First the FBI. Right. <laughs> now right? This. Honestly. <laughs> 
Steve Steve was a rider in this situation because I specifically remember this lady cop came up and she was like, I saw you and pointed to Steve spray painting this bench and I was just like, yeah, you fucking did. <laughs> yeah, right. It wasn't me and Steve was just like, ah. didn't say like, hey, it was him. Yeah. He, he took it on the chin. Fuck yeah. Um, but it's funny because all the cops are like conversing like, where were you? Well, I was over by this tree and... I remember them singling out Zane and saying, I thought that tall one was going to run. So I brought my bike and he had a bicycle. He's like, that <laughs> oh guy looks God. fast. <laughs> and Honestly, Zane, this is like word for word. Yeah, I'll never forget this. this. And this Zane, a Zane? Yeah. Was he in training or something? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Zane has a, has, a him? <laughs> he has a history of uh, getting arrested and stuff. So yep. it's like... Like he knew, like I, at this point, I know that like there was one time him and Lee Andrews got busted for something, and they ran and got hit by a cop car and shit like that. And what? Zane actually ended up telling me like I thought we were gonna run, and I was just like it wasn't worth it. Like, <laughs> so so he did look like he was gonna yeah, run because yeah, he thought he was, was gonna run. He had full intentions on running. Yeah, yeah right. Not, we no one else ran, so he was just like, uh, uh-huh. right. And it was also just like the way that there was like six of us, you know, that like we couldn't all convey run, you know, right, yeah. right. But it's also good we didn't because there was a cop at every you know yeah every. right and uh there was one police officer who was like really like doing the bad cop like i can't even read that shit you can read that how about i come to your house and i'll write in puerto rican i could read it you can't read it i don't give a shit how about that and he like took this way too personally right yeah um but for some reason whenever as jp said they they said that they saw me do it because we probably you know yeah. Both had plaid shorts and uh-huh. a tank top on. No doubt. You had the book bag. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. And um, you, you really can't tell the difference. Especially. <laughs> yeah, right. Clearly, we just proved that. Um, My handwriting would have been way better. <laughs> um, I, for some reason, I was like, I have to take the blame for this uh-huh. because I felt like your dad, JP, would be very mad at me. Oh, for sure. And mad at you. So I figure if I take the blame... Then we eliminate another party. I yeah, I understand Still that. Still to this day, I mean, Steve's mom's a rider too because yeah. my parents never knew about that. Fuck yeah! Like Steve's mom came and picked us up from the station. Gosh, she was so mad. Yeah, she was pissed, mom. but she never told my mom. They're gonna find out again. Yeah, yeah right. they're, they're, they're about to find out real soon that you guys got arrested as fuck. So <laughs> we did not get arrested. <laughs> arrested. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. They weren't even real goddamn cops. Okay, that's why they were so. Uh, they were campus police. Jesus. Because we're close to CMU and they got a quota to make. And how much shit do you think goes on in Little Squirrel Hill? Nothing. Nothing in the summertime. They see three, two 16 year old kids, one 19 year old spray yeah. painting, and you would have thought that we murdered the president. You yeah. Know? Like, they're I feel like, that. yeah, we're getting a raise. Yeah. And, you know, like, that's why there were so many of them. They just wanted to make their quota, right? Yep. And so I took the blame. That one guy was like, no, I want you riding up front. And uh-huh. uh, I rode up front, and he's like, y'all don't even have to worry about the seatbelts, which I thought was super ironic. <laughs> super <laughs> ironic. But it was like leather seats, and I was like, this is this is weird. Uh-huh. Um, and then, yeah, my mom picked us up. And then probably two days later, uh, it was time to wrestle. Time to wrestle. And on this show, uh, we started the day, like we said, with Zane versus Quinn. And then we rolled into uh, me finally getting my match with Steve. Yes. And I remember um, I I saw... So good. I was like, man, I want to have the type of match I want to have. But, uh-huh. I do have hard feelings. Yep. No doubt. Um, it, and so. that started uh, a thing for me going no, forward. I, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, sure, uh, yeah, so I voice. got hit over the head. Uh-huh. No, I hit on the... What, how did I... How did okay, so I, I, I knew this was going to be like a little bit of a thing. my cell phone? So the idea was, you said, hit me in the head. Yeah, okay. I'm not happy with So that. I pick up the light tube, and I bust you in the head. A good one. But as anybody who's taken light tubes probably... Probably knows. I, I knew you don't really do. feel them. No, I no, they're not bad at all. It, it kind of explodes and then the shit happens. Dom yeah, hit me so with the first better. one before we Summer started bash. wrestling. Yeah. No, before that. Oh, we just did it. Yeah, I had a light tube. It was like a couple days before the one IWC show at the Big Butler. Oh there. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I had a light tube and. I remember I wore this really weird shirt for some reason. Recording like, it was recording on my dad's digital camera. Right, right. And Dom That's probably whacked human, yeah. me with it I, I so hard yeah. Yeah. that it sucked. I, I like, it was painful. Yeah. Like, and then I remember uh, watching it and like, still pausing it, and you could see there was like a flame. 
Oh you yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah, I that's sick. Like, please, yeah for that moment where the, the dust was his. coming up, I You're think it combusted. I don't know whose shirt that was. I, I don't know whose shirt this was. I was wearing. Uh huh. It was like a silky weird shirt, yes, like still fleece, do and this. I think it had a chemical reaction. And mostly, and the reason it I did. Because um, so yeah, it's funny. I completely like forgot about that. I, Dom, you were the first one. It was just completely random. random. Like yeah. you whacked me. I remember you weren't even wearing a shirt that backfired oh, at you. <laughs> so like you feel <laughs> the sting I, of the glass the after you've you been hit, but the actual hit itself is really not least, painful and it's right. really not a big deal. It's like a balloon pop. Right. Exactly. So the plan is I bust him over the head. I pick up the tube and I bust him over the head and I love that I did it. And light tubes explode, glass flies off and cuts his shoulder. And he's bleeding like a bitch out of his shoulder. I also got hit on the back, too. It was a double. It got me twice. Right. Um, so he's bleeding like a bitch out of his shoulder. And, like, we have the match. And it goes on. And we do the thing. And I think I I don't really remember. It says on here that the camera got fucked up. And I 100% remember the camera got fucked up because yeah. we used the same camera to film what we're on right now. Right. Something. And I remember telling you that it was going to be my last match. Right. I think the battery was dead. And I was yep. like, Rick, I need you. Or this Absolutely. Match. Right. I remember you saying, I really said that? Yeah. That's funny. I mean, I get it because you had to go all the way back in the house and charge it. And oh, I just, did. I remember that now. Yeah. We just wrestled and we didn't record it. Yeah. You're like, Man, why would I do this for this guy, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. Absolutely. And I remember um, even like to the day where I came back to wrestling, at, you know, BYF, oh, and, you know, whenever. Uh -huh. It was like, wow. Like, Going like, back on, like I remember that moment, like oh, because at that time, like I'm never going back there. Right, like I promised. Dude. Right, like I, absolutely. I'm going pro, I don't and, sure, and that's, that's why the blood's all dry and everything because it had been a while since the match happened. You just exactly. let it lay there, but the blood's all dried up now Correct. because I had to go back in and charge it. Yeah, definitely. So um, get up, get up, get go up, back get in, up. charge it, come back out. I'm filming this. He Good says I just had a match with Sick Rick, whatever. And uh, oh, yeah. as, as far as we know, this, this is the, probably the last time we're ever going to see Steve, and this is our introduction to watching Zayn wrestle. The idea behind Zayn versus Quinn was that it was going to be revealed that Quinn was also in oh, the no, not again. Uh -huh. oh. and uh, Quinn was the champion, Yes. and uh, Zayn was supposed to lay good. down for Quinn yes. to get the belt. Yes, and he did lay down for a second, and then he thought better of it and yeah. stood up and started fighting. Exactly. Yeah. And then the idea is, you know what, I'm trying to leave this company, and I want to steal the belt. Why? Yeah. You know, you need to do this so I can, you know, you can lay down for me, uh -huh. and then we can kill this company, because right. I was also inspired by the NWO. Yeah. Um, so you ask him, you're like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm just living life, man. Like, yeah. just being real Zane. And he does a, a lot of really cool athletic stuff as this match goes on and what what's getting in here. But Essentially, this is uh, this is just Steve's last match. You know, yes. this Damn this it. was the end of Folkland as we knew it, and this was the beginning of how I eventually ended up finding the backyard wrestling link. Because even up until right now, I still have no idea. Right. Uh, all I know is that you now have, for a second time, oh, someone from outside of Pittsburgh oh, coming here yes. to wrestle, That's and this guy. It's better than the last guy. And I thought the last guy was pretty all right, but this dude. that again. We didn't get the shot. And uh, I'm like, damn, Quinn got to shot. wrestle him, and I. In Quinn's match in the was way. filmed. I had it at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. So I don't know what happened to it, but at one point, Quinn versus Zayn was on tape. Um. So yeah, you guys do some shit. There's even a part in this match where uh, I remember specifically. We were just fucking around that day, and I think like we were like hanging out, and I was like, "Oh, we're wrestling today. We should probably plan this match." And we planned two spots. Yeah, right. And this entire match was on the fly. And, and one I one of those two spots, uh, the ref was in the way of the entire spot. Yep. And then after you landed, I'm like, uh, uh, "I kind of missed that, and I think you guys should just do it again." And then you're like, "Yeah." So you look like Zane. But it was like again. you know, like that was the one spot we planned. Yeah, right, like, right, you know, exactly. Well, right, right. That was and you guys did do just a lot of rolling around yep. and like spots on the fly. And there's a right-handed suplex because he's a yarder. Um, and he's just doing cool stuff, and I get really into the whole idea of Zane, which is it ends up taking me down a crazy path. Um, Steve does some moves in here that Ed ends up stealing eventually because oh, Ed is uh, seeing some of this stuff. And he wasn't there for this show. And he figures, you know, this kid's never going to wrestle right. again. So we have, we have Zane hitting Steve with a uh, backyard wrestling finisher. Go, the taco driver right there. Incredibly, takes like a boss. Uh, there's all three of them, boys. And then Steve almost immediately gets up. Oh, my God, that was so fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. he was so happy was it was so over. Fun. There it is. There it is, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, yeah. I had never 
done a match on the fly. Right, and yeah. And just like that chemistry I had with him. Uh-huh. And we had never wrestled before. Right. You know, it was just like unlike anything that I'd ever done. Uh-huh. And there was a time where I, I, I actually wrestled essentially Freak Boy on the fly. And it, that was, it, it was rushed, you know, uh-huh. like, so to speak. It was, but it wasn't like purely on the fly like this was. So. so we thought that was the end of the line for the most part. We didn't know what else was coming. Um, that was the end for me. Yeah. Which meant the end for JP. Right, exactly. But there was still one more show. Oh, there was? Yes. Uh, Oh, yes, there was. So you guys are leaving. I know you're leaving. Um, Me and Quinn are talking about what are we going to do from here, right? And this is where I finally start to get Ed involved. And Ed is Hack Edgeman, uh, Backyard Wrestling Goat. If he would have done it any longer than he did it, everybody would know it. Uh, Whenever Ed went out, he was literally at the top. When he started was on camera for this moment right here. I don't think I realized that. Oh shit. So Uh oh. Here we are. Oh, it's over. Which I remember at this shit. point you were it's at over. I was like, okay, well I need to get the belt back storyline wise. Yes. And the initial plan was going to be Jay's here again. Um uh, I was gonna <laughs> say uh the mat it was gonna be like an impromptu thing where like, you know, somehow like it's not like like I actually kinda of pseudo wrestle again, but uh-huh. I like squash you just to my this character guy. wins right. the championship so I can quit. And I was like, well, you're like, no, I have to win the belt. Do you remember this? Yes, absolutely. Wow. And uh, I was like, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Fuck? I was like, if, if I steal the belt and quit, what's stopping you from like calling the cops on me? I, I was like trying to be like, lo- right. like giving you logic and you just weren't <laughs> having it. And I was like, Rick, like I like. Because, so the reason I wasn't having it is because I no longer, I knew you were done. I didn't care what your input was. Okay. I, I had z- zero, anything you had to say to me, not as a person, as a person, I was cool with right, right, right. Um, In terms of like you trying to tell me what I'm going to do here. I'm like, no, you're gone. Me and right. Right. stuff now. Like I'm trying to get Ed involved. And I remember thinking, like, I, I may have even said, like, you told me you wanted us to do storylines, really and I'm trying to do a storyline here, and right. you're not giving me it. And right. Okay, I got everybody so, I mean, in the In shot. hindsight, you know, like, it All is right. what it is. You see? Yeah. You know, I mean, how many people saw this and watched the storyline anyway? No, yeah. no. Nobody right. ever saw this. But, you know. So I steal the belt and then quit because I per- that's my belt. Like, right. I bought this for ETW. So it's actually the – this is a – toy one like that's a replica that we ended up upgrading to um at scaw oh, okay. it was after you know i was at mr hoagie Ew. Uh, i bought that and just randomly like upgraded you know what? it um so i, I literally owned it and i was you like well, i want i don't because want you to use my belt you right know? so i'm putting it on right now. that's all can you guys award me with this right now just put it on me oh the nww thing on the top of it yeah i remember that I forgot all about that. And this was in October. <laughs> yes. They're putting this on me right now. Why? Because I'm tired. I remember I just got why? surgery because on my I'm nose, too. That's yep. why I wanted to take it easy. Yep. I just got my CTK. first surgery on my nose because I remember at one point the strap now, hits me in the nose. Yeah. It hit why me in the face dead? so well, <laughs> gently, <laughs> but my ass, nose was so and, sensitive well, that it was like it felt like it hit in the face with a hammer and I had to nose sell it. What? How long was that? August. Dead. One time yep. he beat him. <laughs> I wrestled him one time, and he wrestled him one time. Both as vocal, mind you. <laughs> I wrestled him one I like time. I got my ass kicked. Yeah, that's pretty sure. Quinn well. always had some and pretty decent gear yeah. whenever the basement so for the woods. Now, clearly, like, a it's a little shot. more cleared out numerous, and numerous, uh, no in better shape in general than it was in the summer. Echo. Uh, we like actually have no been sex. putting Echo. the ground it around it into some Echo. use, so right, right. the, no the weeds are starting to clear yeah. out a little bit. I have proved myself in my wrestling ability and my wrestling brains that I should have had the number one contendership. So <laughs> I didn't know what the hell that meant. Like I still don't know why you think so much of yourself. Like even though it's in storyline or whatever, so but the you stuff what? you were saying is As like I, I actually have experience right here now. and yeah. he doesn't. And I'm like, how did what experience? Right. Okay. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Right. You didn't know. Right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you knew that I was Sean Phoenix. I wrestled as Quinn. I'm sure I told you about Super oh, Show. Right. No. Yeah. No? Well, no. I mean, you definitely knew I wrestled Quinn. You, you intentionally God. went out of your way to never tell me about that. <laughs> Trust not taping. Would say, like, I post Bye. on the internet sometimes, and that's Bye. it. I don't remember that. Yeah, it was, really like, it was like, oh, Mary, we're not going to tell this guy about this. That's so funny. That's so, sorry about that. <laughs> so, so this is probably also around the time you were trying to hide your... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. yeah, and that would make sense, too, because why would I care about posting your shit wherever I posted it? You know, I wouldn't. 
Um, and this was actually you filmed on the same and camera and that and you and Zane were on, and you had that camera at your crib for a while. Yes. Yes. And so and I ended up getting it back, and I, so I did this whole situation here. And it was like in this time period where I had already met Zane, and I knew of B-Cubed, and I knew of you, and I start finding my way to the internet, and I'm like, he's telling me that there's people on the internet that he posts to, and that's obviously where he found this Zane and these B-Cubed and all this from, right, right, you know? Right. So I go down the rabbit hole, and I eventually somehow, I don't know how I did it, I probably just typed in Sean Phoenix, Zane B-Cubed, and Maybe, yeah. ended up on the Backyard Wrestling link, and yeah. this is where I found out about it. Right, right. Um, I later tried to introduce Ed to it, and whenever that kind of stuff starts rolling, we get into a little fed that we ended up calling NWW Pittsburgh. Cool. Uh, nobody here was in NWW no. Pittsburgh. So for the first time next episode, we're going to be introducing uh, Spike, a.k.a. Quinn Carnage, a.k.a. Caden Angel, and wow. the Goat Hack Edgeman. Oh, really? Yeah. Goated. I got... I got them coming over here for the next episode, and I just, uh, I just really hope they make it. I probably can't make it for yeah. that one. I understand. Dom, you'll be here, right? I hope. This is your house. Yeah, absolutely. But for now, so that's the story. That's uh, the base. That's New Wave Wrestling, the end of ETW, SCAW, and all the other stuff that happened in between, Correct. especially uh, JP well, yeah. trying to kick somebody out of a moving van. Yes. <laughs> But what we do want to do is wrap up this episode with JP saying his favorite word one more time. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck you, Golden Triangle movie out. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>